Storm Fighter Combat. The game's signature spark mechanic lets you cancel any attack into a dash and sets you up to combo opponents like never before. Their alpha is available now on Steam with an open beta release coming August 30th. The beta will have new stages and a new stance character, the chain-wielding assassin Reyna. Evo 2022. Absolutely not. Evo 2022. It's been three long years since we got to be in a room like this to celebrate fighting games. So are you ready for a three-year-long hiatus of some of the best Street Fighter V you are ever, ever going to see? All right, hold on. Before we get started, let's check out this quick intro video of Street Fighter V.
one more time. We've been ready for the crush just to do this live. I've been waiting for a minute just to do this right. For one more strike, I'm in my prime. Let's get it. Who wants some? I put everybody on blast. Hit them with the meter at the edge of y'all dash. Everybody gets snatched when they're trying to hold back. Think they gon' get a minute, press a button, get trapped like that. Shoot me till it's 50-50. I'ma put them in the corner when the mix is risky. Frame one, throw them to the wall till they break down. Trigger charged up, ain't nobody got a safe jump. Whoa. I've been waiting on the next wave. Then we started from the bottom with a fist. Tuesday. Middle of the hurricane, nothing changed, you just gotta find another way World warrior, I never need another name Top tier, I don't care who made the list, I'ma knock them down another place Oh God, oh God, we popping off, they all get crossed on block I'm just waiting for the comeback, run that Hit them with the forward, let the screen flash We gon' turn this whole damn city into golf land One more time, one more time, come on One more time, one more time, come on We outside, we outside, come on We outside, we outside, come on One more time, one more time, come on One more time, one more time, come on We outside, we outside Our first contestant, get him out here. Gachi Kun! All right, here he comes. Man needs no introduction. Daigo, the beast, Umehara! Let's get our next player out. Please, Kawano, take the stage. All right, we got to welcome the murder face, Tokido. Tokido! Let's hear it. We got to make this one count. Can get just a kid please come out here? Just a kid, get on this stage! Let's bring him out here. Oh, yo, King! All right, I hope we got some more energy because I need you to make some noise for Mr. Crimson! And our final player to round out EVO 2022, Street Fighter V, top eight. Hi-dom! Yeah! All right, one more time, let's hear it. This is your Street Fighter V, top eight. Give it to him! Now that the stage is set, let me give this over to our commentators to finish this off. We are back, Street Fighter fans! It is time for some Street Fighter V here at Evolution 2022. My name is James Chen. 
I am here. I'm Ultra David. I am ecstatic to be back here in person in the real world, sitting next to James, having a blast talking with all of you folks at home. As you can see, there is quite a crowd behind us here at Evo, as I am so excited to see. I hope you guys all heard the Chris Lee speech before that. Oh. I just wanted to echo many of the same sentiments that he said about how important community has been over the last few years. That has been a gigantic way that we've gotten through this. And shout out to everybody who's been partaking in that online community. But here we are in physical person, IRL, in the top eight. Kind of mad at Chris. He got me teary-eyed already. I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle this. I may have to just, uh, you know, bail at some point in time, unable to <laughs> speak. But look, we don't just have a top eight for you here for Street Fighter V. We have one of the most amazing top eights that you could possibly imagine over here. We've got... Gotchakun, a former Capcom Cup champion. We've got Daigo the Beast. No introduction needed for Daigo. Kawano, one of the youngest and strongest players from Japan. And of course, Tokido, also an EVO champion just a few years back. That's right, and then on the loser's side, we break it out from just being a Japanese affair, and we go to the US, <laughs> where Just a Kid has qualified. This is his first EVO top eight. We'll get through, by the way, all of the players that they've beaten on the way here. Each one of these guys has an impressive list of names behind them. Oil King as well from Taiwan. His first EVO top eight, at least for Worlds and in person. Mr. Crimson from France. Same with him. First EVO offline, Worlds, top eight. And Idok. Actually, he wanted me to let you know that uh, he's been here before, as you guys all know. <laughs> <laughs> he, has, he has, in fact, been in EVO top eight in the past. Got fifth in 2019, of course, and he is here yet again. So both on winner's side and on loser's side, man, you are right. We have a battle. We got a lot of storylines here, James. Dude, I appreciate the fact that those slots in the bracket are already pre-populated with the Japanese flag. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're shout, right. Shout out to the production. They know what's going on over here. And of course, the efficiency again. This is the craziest bracket, I swear. Every one of these players, if they manage to win, there is such a deep story behind mm. their win. But you heard from the crowd right there as Joe was introducing everybody. It seems like most of the hearts here in the audience are with IDOM. Can a US player, obviously IDOM or just a kid, either can do it, but can a US player bring home the crown to EVO for Street Fighter 4 or Street Fighter 5, finally. <laughs> yeah, or will it be a Japanese player who's had many a chance? Will it be another French player? Won't have been the first time mm -hmm. that a French player does the trick. Of course, we have a Taiwanese player uh, in the cards here as well. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be starting out with Gachikun versus Daigo. As James said, not much introduction needed for Daigo, but let's just be a little bit more <laughs> thorough about that. Uh, here's a set of histories for Daigo at EVO. First. 2009. Ah, even before this, whatever. You guys know he was good before that. But in 2009, <laughs> first place. 2010, first place. 2011, fourth place. 2012, fifth place. 2013, seventh place. 2014? No. <laughs> no. And not since 2013 has Daigo made it to Evo Top 8 for Street Fighter. This is the craziest thing. I mean, Daigo, one of obviously the most storied players of all time, but let's talk about Gachikun here as well. One of my favorite stories about Gachikun, obviously, he wasn't sure this is something that he could do. Yes. This was not something that he was convinced. Becoming a pro player in Japan, it's not necessarily that obvious of a path as a gamer. He then went to Red Bull Kumite, you know, mm. in France, and he got second place to Nemo. And he was like, wait, I'm good. Wait. Like, I can do this. What? And Red Bull ended up signing him, and then he ended up winning Capcom Cup with a large prize pool and then was able to buy a home for his wife and himself. And it's just such a wonderful story. And here he is again on the stage of EVO 2022. Absolutely right. Now they, of course, have experience against each other. I'll tell you that the most recent stuff that I could find was in the Topanga League. And in that, Gachikun versus Daigo, won seven to four. That was Gachikun who took it mm, in that okay. set. But. Daigo has known now for most of a day who he's going to be playing against. And his ability to game plan and think ahead for first rounds like this, just about unparalleled. <laughs> prep time Daigo. That prep time Daigo. Now, it's not full time prep time Daigo. That's something we talk about when it's like you know a week or two in advance. That's not the case here. 
But nevertheless, he's had some time. But again, like I said, they have a lot of experience against each other. They're not coming into this thing blind. Gachka got third in that Topanga Championship. Daigo got sixth, so both pretty good. Uh, Gachka also wanted to say, look, up until now, nobody's won both the CPT and the Evo. In the yeah. same year, in Street Fighter Five, mm -hmm. he wants to be the first to do it. Daigo says, "I'm going to show the potential of Guile." <laughs> and look at this, dude. I mean, like, Gatsukuna has been playing Rashid for pretty much this whole entire time. A character who has very rarely dropped in the tier list. Daigo, he tried to like Ryu and a couple of other characters, but as soon as he found Guile, everything changed. And here we go. The first match is underway. Evo Top Eight. Let's. Go! We're talking about all first to threes here in this top eight, just to set the stage. Daigo just like that, fighting out. Again, obviously Rashid, one of the biggest strengths of this character is he is able to take you and put you into the corner off of just about any combo. And so Daigo will be fighting out of that corner a lot. Oh, really important to have seen even at the beginning that Gachikun was willing to jump in and set the stage like that. Daigo fighting out really well. It's not all about booms, of course, for Gaia. He's got a lot of other tools, but as he tries it, Gachikun gets the corner again. Ah, uh, the first EX wake up flash kick. Daigo establishing that right away. One of the hardest people to read whether he's going to EX flash kick or not. He put a little stutter in there. Gachikun did not take the bait. Watch out for the critical art. Ah, the, the shimmy to finish off the round. Daigo getting the throw, and you know, obviously, if you're rooting for America, you're rooting for a player like Aidan, but so many fans here in the stadium, Daigo represents fighting games to them. And can you imagine the storyline if Daigo can win this year at EVO for Street Fighter V? Holding on to that oh. spot well. Gotchkin again with the jump, empty as you could see. Back to this neutral over here. You can see them both fighting for the stage position right now. So much of what it's about is about that third oh. screen. He jumps in yet again, this time with the roundhouse. But yes, of course, both of them would like to be up close pressuring. Guile's also cool from range, but that one third screen, we'll take a look at it once we get back to it again. That's what this is going to be largely about. Here's yeah. Gachikun in the corner. And smart for Gachikun to use that V shift, V break. I, I, we didn't have that last time when we were here at EVO. And so that's a new mechanic for people who aren't uh, familiar with it. But Rashid's V-Break, very good range. So able to help fight against the Sonic Boom pressure. Oh, Dago did not expect that hit. Yeah, looking he... for confirms, looking for crush on that. Gachikun is starting to get in trouble, though. He's got resources, oh, and he's finally hit. He's going to do it right he... there. And he's going to go into the super just to make sure. Obviously expensive there to use all the resources to just drain a couple of pixels. But it's fine getting the round. So important, especially against a player like Daigo. Just first game here. Anti-air's there. Gachikun with his eyes open. He's got the corner yet again. Guile hiding out in the cave. He's made his way out. Ooh, gets the crush counter sweep. Sets up the safe jump. Punishes the V-shift. And Daigo once again trying to fight out into this corner. Like I said, this is what we're going to see a lot of. Mm. A little Ooh. too far. Here's Gachikun again pressuring up close. Yeah, waking up with a shimmy and getting the punish as well. He's got his trigger ready to go. Daigo not letting it happen easily. Spending some cash in order to try to build space. Yeah, he tries it yet again. Here's Gachikun up close. Just actually builds meter for it. And he knew it. And he knew it. He had just actually by hitting Daigo, given him that EX meter. And he saw it there on the bottom left side of your screen. He knew it was coming up. Game one, Gachikun. Again, as you mentioned, the three out of five here. So it's just one game. Daigo, of course, great at making the adjustments, but Gachikun. Capcom Cup champion, like I said, obviously of that pedigree that can... It's just so hard to fight against. He's so good at making the adjustments himself. Look, he's been fourth at EVO before. By the way, he started off the round in the same way he started off the first round of the first game. Delay, then jump in. This time blocked only. Yeah, and one of the key things in that last round that we saw, the closing round, so, so look at this, we got the V break again, but he's also got the V skill one to be able to roll through Sonic Booms and punish there. Yeah. He, he's got himself set up so that he is using all of his resources to fight against the Sonic Boom pressure. And again, it's about that one third screen range, right? We see battling back and forth, in and out. Keep in your mind's eye if you can. About a third screen between these two characters and look at them walking in and out of that range constantly. 
Yep, you saw right there a preemptive attempt to V-shift and V-break through a Sonic Boom. Now Gachakun run up and try to throw. Daigo with the check though. Gachakun was going to try to go for another throw. Nice counter hit combo confirmed by Daigo, but one combo from Gachakun can still take this round. Mm -hmm. Daigo steaming, suddenly dashing, suddenly movement. Ooh. He's found the hit. The yeah. unorthodox timing of those EX booms, Gachikun just did not expect the double resources spent so fast. I mean, is this, like, Daigo is known for being very stoic and very hard to read, but he actually looks nervous to me. I don't know if it's just me. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Got bullet time action. <laughs> and now Gachikun. Oh, oh, gets the crush counter. The stun. How much resources do you think he's going to spend for this? Just the one bar, okay? Just get down to where a grab or a combo will kill. That is the name of the game. If you can't outright kill, get it down to one decision. Gachaku now trying to go up 2-0 over Daigo. Again, the weight, the jump. He started off so many of these rounds in just that way. He's got Ooh. a great read on Daigo's tendencies. Yeah, well, Daigo, again, he got one EX flash kick baited. He is the kind of player that it refuses to let you train him yes. and take away one of his best options. Big harassment. And Daigo with his back to the tunnel. It's like, I feel like he's been there for majority of the match. And look at this, low profiling under the jump attack. Goes for the reset, meaty into the throw. Daigo now, trying to tie this up, one to one. Out of there. Oh frames. boy. Looking for big stuff there with Gachikun. Oh, but you yes. know what, Daigo's fine with this. He's got the side switch now. But again, like I said, Rashid, so good at controlling his position on the screen. But Daigo, also one of the best at finding the opportunities to dash forward like yeah, that. absolutely. There it is, and it's enough, just barely. Actually, it wasn't truly a punish. Not sure what Gachikun was doing, but he just got caught low. And we are tied one to one. I hope you all are paying attention at home to that one third screen range between these two and Rashid jumping over it, both of them walking in and out of it, each of them trying to hit each other at that spot. Yeah, that back fist covers some of it. Here's the empty jump low for Gachikun. Again, putting Daigo under the bridge, hiding under there like a troll. He's stuck. Gachikun finds the stun. He's got great situation for himself in the corner now. He still needs more. Okay, here we go. And now the shimmy there for Gachikun to finish out that round right there. Of course, you know, shimmying basically, you trick perch someone into thinking you're gonna throw them. They try to tech, causes you to whiff your throw and you punish it right afterwards. First time Pack has been on the side in a long time. It has <laughs> almost all been him getting cornered and yes, fighting out sometimes, but he's been stuck in the corner oh, a lot. Oh no, he just a little too close. That view reversal put him a little too far away for that standing medium punch to connect. But as a result, he's got Daigo back to where Daigo's basically been living mm -hmm. at this point. Oh! Daigo builds some V meter with the crush, got a big combo, got space for himself. And again, the anti-air from Daigo, ready to go. And you oh, see that action? Yeah, exactly. No fear at all in Daigo's heart. But a shimmy again from Gachakun. And guess what? You're in the corner again. Yeah, over here by the bananas this Woo! time. Here's Daigo. He had a hit, but didn't believe in the rest. Yeah, but now you got to watch out. Lower overhead. Shimmy didn't punish. No whip punish from Daigo. He chucked ah! it. The shimmy right there after the jump, getting Gachakun to finally whip the throw. The tension of that moment. <laughs> Again, Daigo really doing a good job now at finding a lot of normals. He's, oh, suddenly Gachakun with the sweep. Sets up attack. Here he is yet again. Back in the corner, hanging out with his buddies, the dancers. Nice, sweeping the Sonic, the Sonic oh. Blade startup. Daigo trying to interrupt the cancel. One more mix up into stun. It's gonna be the throw. Gatsukun should go up two to one. Gatsukun feeling a little comfortable here now. Two to one over Daigo. Is Daigo going to go immediately to the loser's bracket here at the start of top eight? Round Obviously, 
You don't want to go to that loser's bracket. No. It is so scary down there. He dashed into the start. There have been so many jumps. Daigo actually both had the same choice to move forward at the beginning, and Gachikun got there first. And like that, he's got the corner yet again. Mm, finally trying to jump over a Sonic Boom, and Daigo not throwing the Sonic Boom, getting the Flash Kick anti-air. But again, you can see Daigo not always just sitting there crouching, charging up the so Oh my god, and again, the Wake Up EX Flash Kick! Oh, if he gets knocked down again, he's not going to have those EX resources for a little while. Yeah, so Gachikun can approach. But the thing about it for Gachikun, I mean, and for a lot of players, when you get hit by an EX Wake Up like that, you take a little bit of damage, you're back on your feet, get to neutral again. And if you can convince the opponent that you're hit, getting hit by it all the time, then you bait it out and then you punish it. And then you go up to match point versus Daigo, right? That's we all. That's what we all get that, right? <laughs> but it's Gachikun, and like I said, former Capcom Cup champion. He's so strong, and again, one of the masters of Rashid. And he's one round away from sending Daigo to loser's bracket. He's done a fantastic job of making it so Daigo can't easily do what he'd like to do. Control that space. Keep Rashid out. Rashid's got all these tools. And he's going to... No, not no, quite there. It was fast enough to punish. It was the right read. Instead, offensive V-Rev. Guile pressuring. Ooh. No, not for long. Gachikun with a hit. And trying to push him all the way back to the corner. Goes for the throw, but a nice tech. That's not enough to kill, but it's just one more mix-up. The trade and Gachikun will take it. 3-1 over Daigo Umahara and move on in the winner's bracket. Gachikun with the W, as we said, like he had done in Topanga. Moving forward. And, it, you know, as I was saying, I was really impressed. Same when I've seen him in the past. And his style versus a guy versus anybody who'd like to control the stage with projectiles, he can not just with the character, but with his own timings, really do a great job of denying that control. You talked about some of his techniques for sure. The V skill is a big part of it. The V shift into V break is a big part of it. But it's just also regular stuff that any character has. Yeah. His jump timings were fantastic. Mm -hmm. Those were amazing. It's not easy to jump in against somebody like Daigo, who typically has a great read on when the opponent would like to move forward in that way. And then by setting up all of those jumps, he was able to get that dash in near yeah. one of the final rounds at the beginning, which again got him quickly into the corner. So it was just a ton of reads. Uh, I'm thinking about his stand fierce right to whiff punish or wish punish, basically, versus some of what Daigo was trying to do, his normals that Daigo was using. It just got shut down over and over again. <laughs> I mean, you think about how often Guile gets the flash kick, someone trying to jump over a sonic boom, and yet when it happened, it was so unique that I had to like actually point it out to tell you how accurate Gacha Kun's jumps had been that entire time. Yeah, and Partly why is that, well, they know each other, but it's also it's also the little stutters of the timings, right? It wasn't as if at round start he was holding up forward. <laughs> it was a little bit of a delay beforehand. It was a little longer of a delay later on. It was a few seconds of delay later on. It was all these different timings that he was putting in there just to make it so that Daigo didn't know what was coming up next. Yeah, you know, for all the musicians out there, I always like to call it syncopation. Mm. You know, throwing, doing things off beat. A lot of times when we play fighting games, it's like, I block something, let me throw Sonic Boom right away. I'm getting up off the floor, let me do this right away. Doing everything on beat, but syncopating it, doing it just a little, like maybe half a second later than normal is enough to throw your opponents off guard. But again, none of these players here are gonna be off guard, caught off guard on this kind of a stage. Mm -hmm. It is Tokido and Kawano coming up here. Tokido, who has been a champion here at EVO, he knows this stage. And Kawano, what a story about this player here. I talk about this a lot uh, with the Japanese players. You know, for a while the veterans have been dominating a lot of sales. Unlike America, we have so many young players in the US coming up and really starting to dominate. In Japan, it hasn't been that way, at least, you know, previous to the past few years. In fact, Nauman winning EVO Japan was one of the first times one of the youth had actually won a major event like that. But since then, Kawano has firmly established himself. It's like him and Higuchi are the two strongest of the youth players right now from Japan. And Kawano making it here, defeating Daigo also at Capcom Cup, uh, the exhibition earlier, uh, just a few months ago. Kawano definitely 
one of the strongest players, and these two have fought each other a, bu a bunch. They had they had a, an exhibition match, and I remember Kuana was really sad after he lost to Tokido, and then he came back and ended up beating Tokido. And so there's a little bit of a, a history with these two. That's true, and part of it is that in the Japan Open qualifiers, Kawano won 3-2 to two, not too long ago. Uh, another part of it is that in the CPT Japan 4, back in 2021, or uh, at the end of that season anyway, Kawano also won 3-2, 3-1 in, in Grand. Uh, so Kawano and Tokido definitely have some experience in recent times. Yeah, I think the, the generational thing is a really important storyline here, absolutely. You talk about Kawano, a young player. You talk about Tokido, who has been at the top of the fighting game world for over 20 years at this point. <laughs> over 20 years at this point. Uh, a long, long time. You talk about Daigo, who is in his uh, fifth decade at this point. He's 41. Uh, so... The, and Ga Gachikun as well is 30 years old. So there is definitely a, a generational aspect to this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. among the Japanese scene for sure. And Kawano is a very bright spot. He's had, um, you know, some really nice results. Fifth at FAV Cup. Like I said, first at CPT Japan 4. He got uh, 33rd, though, at the recent CPT Japan. So definitely not the result that he wanted. Whereas Tokido got second at Topanga. He got seventh at that CPT Japan. Fifth at FAV Cup, but I think really when you're talking about Tokido, you're talking about just an expectation of excellence at the highest, biggest moments, right? Uh, right? You talked about his Evo history. He got second 2018, first in 2017. Mm -hmm. He got fifth in 2015, second in 2013. And those are just in Street Fighter. <laughs> uh, we're not I even mean, talking about all the many, many other games that he's had success in. He used to walk around with like five medals hanging around his neck. And honestly, the very first time I met him was at the very first official Evolution. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was B5 and then it became Evolution. And he won Capcom versus SNK2 there. Yeah, man. So he has been an EVO champion since the very beginning. Yep. And to imagine that he's been playing fighting games for this long and still on top of his game is absolutely just mind-blowing. Absolutely in everybody's shortlist for best player of all time, <laughs> really. Uh, right, right in there. So as the players are figuring stuff out, I figured we maybe would take a little bit of time to talk about some of the other stuff that's going on uh, for the other players, right? It's not just about these four that we've seen so far, or two that we've seen so far, and two that who are coming up on stage. Just a Kid, Oil King, Mr. Crimson, Idom, we'll see in a bit. But there's also a ton of players who actually did not make <laughs> in this top eight, right? Uh, Everyone we have, else. <laughs> well, that is factually true, but... Um, I think, I think it's interesting to, to discuss because it is just a sign of how difficult this tournament always is. There were over 1,300 players in Street Fighter V this year, second most of any game. And along with that has come a lot of different, um, you know, people who were not able to make it. Some of the people who we had discussed as maybe some of the favorites. I'm thinking about maybe like Mena RD is an example of this. Punk is an example of this. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, so many, so many names have fallen by the wayside. However, I think let's we'll get to that in just a little bit. But as we're trying to work out uh, some stuff over there on the stage, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we will have some more Street Fighter Five action for you guys. Calmness right now on Joe's face. Round and Eita as well, he doesn't look too shook. Fight. Opens with Scythe. So it's a great starter. And block. You see, Joe will just yeah. hang out and block because he doesn't want to risk the uppercut. Great confirm, and he gets the Scythe combo. Jump over, but the uppercut for me. Yeah, yeah, had the autocorrect on deck. Uh, even though Joe's up 2 1, he has really been on point with some of those anti airs. And Joe escapes the corner, finds himself to confirm, gets in with the knee, and there was no uppercut. Maybe Ada just not ready for it now. Oh, yeah, he, he tried missed it, it again. He tried it, but it didn't work. And, oh, you what see the backdash? He was trying to look for the reversal. That's what he expected, and Joe didn't go for it this time. So keeps himself safe to the X, and Joe was out oh, of there, but back in. He tried to be tricky and go into the air and challenge him. Nice. Love the air to air from Joe. Another one, he gets the punish, but it's not enough. He could have spent any X. The absorb. Ita in a great position. He could just do that. Oh, oh a wrist. That jump. I mean, that's how he won and the last one. round. Do it. One more. Joe oh. got hit. Double low short. Yeah, maybe stood up. Maybe tried to button. Who knows? But around for Ata. Maybe even try to view reversal and accidentally stood up or something. But in any case, cock for low. Ata taking you, that first round. You know, that jump for Joe has worked out a lot of these times. He's really had a great read on when there's going to be projectiles. Oh, that was so far that he touched that fireball. Yeah, hit the hurt box of the fireball on startup. Great work for him. 
Patient defense from Joe. No ants here, though. And again, the problem position again. Joe trapped in the corner. Beautiful board. Nash should get out of there. Gets the throw. Was, that wasn't a counter hit. Oh, and he waited for the uppercut again. And eight touches. He understood that that's what Joe's been going for so often. But he oh. baited the throw. It's going to be critical art. Now a lead for Joe. Still got to close out this round if he wants to get this game. Just a tiny bit of life left, but you know, Ken can do so much damage so quickly. You are not out of the waters in any shape or form. But he's going to get the round just like that, Joe. Match point on Eita from Japan. We'll see if he can do it. Loser of this is sent out of the tournament. Ada now down. Oh, what a oh, read from Joe. Guard from the tragedy of something. And you know, Ada almost had critical art. And now, because of that, Joe keeps up the offense. Great under. Okay. Yeah, didn't combo was a bit too far, I think. He, he understood. He knew that. Yeah. And he didn't accidentally go into it. Great uppercut from Ada. Ada chasing him down. Gets awesome. a throw. Now Ada has him in the corner. There's the tech. Great work. Dash up from Joe. Other side, he gets under, and now Joe can escape, although crush counter. Gets the crush counter and the uppercut confirmed. Goes in there with the B trigger. A little too far for that low core fireball to connect. Great lock on the cross up. Joe's Joe. sitting on a lot of meter as well as V trigger. You gotta be careful if you're Ada. Oh man. Took the big risk on the way in. Yeah, just try to get in. Maybe thought Joe was gonna throw a fireball. Joe, one critical arm from taking this. Gotta be wary of the trigger. Ooh, and here. There. And then dashes into the fireball. In the front. Oh, he got him. He spends the critical arm. And Joe. Art. Joe He's got it. He's going to advance. No, he got it just at the end, and Eli Joe takes it. He lives in the tournament. The lone American representative takes out Ada from Japan. Alright, hello to everybody from Las Vegas. That's where we are, or at least part of it. You can see sort of to the side there, there's the convention center and there's a big old arena attached to that baby. And that's where we are! So thank you very much for <laughs> joining us from EVO 2022 here in the arena. We were talking a little bit about players who didn't make this top eight for Street Fighter V. And it's a long list, as James <laughs> mentioned. It's everybody who didn't actually make the top eight. And some of the notables, I would say, right? We're talking about just outside of that top eight, Angry Bird, a player mm -hmm. that many people had said had a great chance. Uh, Higuchi. I brought him up earlier as what the other youth uh, who has been excelling in Japan competition. Chris CCH was just outside of this thing. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I mean like his match versus Just a Kid, which was the qualifying match. Chris was up and Man, the way that he lost was not how he wanted it to go. <laughs> you could really see that, um, unfortunately for him. Kudo as well was in ninth place. So those are your four ninth place placers. New York's Kudo. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're saying, yeah. A very, very strong Chun-Li player. Thirteenth place, Mira. In IQ Southern Mira. California. Well, in Southern California anyway yeah, for the last several Southern years. in Southern California, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll always be Midwest. That's what she told me. So. Yeah. Uh, Luffy as well, 13th, obviously former EVO champion back in Street Fighter 4 times. Problem X, former EVO champion in Street Fighter 5 times, was 13th place. Razor Sien, Sien, <laughs> also EVO champion back in Street Fighter 4. So just a little look at who ended up right outside of this top eight. Yeah, but I think we've got the match, and whoa, is, uh, well, we don't know just yet, because the interesting thing about it, Tokido's been playing Yurian that I saw in most of the pool matches uh, that I've, I've seen him play. And he was even talking about it uh, earlier. He was talking about how he doesn't agree with everybody that Yurian is that much weaker. <laughs> he was joking that he was talking uh, to Dia Mandrake, and Mandrake is like, no, I'm done with Yurian. Oh. <laughs> and Tsukita's like, no, still using Yurian. So I commentated one of his matches in pools, and he was certainly using Yurian. He did, all throughout yesterday. I talked with him about it earlier. He only used Urian yesterday. I was asking him, hey man, are you gonna use Urian today? He said, I'm going Luke. Oh, really? Because the rumor was that he wouldn't play Luke on PS4, but apparently it's just a matchup thing. And so he told me that that's what's gonna happen. He's already taken out Commander Jesse, Picaro, Fugera, and Angry Bird. Kawano's already taken out Gentleman Thief, Yanub, Dankadias, Smug, and Kudo. 
Dang. <laughs> but I mean, it's interesting because, you know, obviously one of the core discussions, the core storyline of Street Fighter V is the fact that Luke is considered the best character in this game. And a lot of players, including Chris CCH, who we talked about, use Luke. And uh, he is a very strong character. Yeah. And I think just the kid even said, I made it in a top eight. No more Lukes in my path. <laughs> Whoops. Well, well, well. <laughs> we'll see if Tokido ends up in his path. But he's at least starting out here with Luke. He didn't say he was going to only go Luke. He just said, in this match, I'm going to go Luke. So it's going to be more of a matchup type of thing. We'll see if he sticks with it. And we're starting Kawano using the character he's used for a long time. That's his Colleen. She was a character who was taken down a peg or two as well, but here he is nevertheless. He's got that top eight. And we're going in with our second match here at EVO 2022 for Street Fighter V Top 8. Oh, and a jump in right away for Kawano to start some damage. And it's been interesting because Tokido's Luke is so, like, it's not flashy. It's so fundamentally sound. He doesn't go for anything crazy, but again, why is Luke so strong? Great normals that move forward and go very far. Uh, he's got a great a projectile, an actual uppercut, and uh, he's just got so many tools and damage output as well. But Kwano's been playing Colleen for a while, and though she did get, you know, slightly nerfed she did. in the definitive patch earlier this year, Still a very strong character, and Kawano maximizing this character. Yeah, some of her damage up was a little worse than before as Tokido dashes in. All of a sudden, he had been backing off so often, I think Kawano just didn't expect it. Yeah, one of the things to note about Tokido is you probably noticed when you Whoa. saw him on the stage earlier, he is now a hitbox player. This is actually, he wasn't a hitbox player, or he, I, I, which controller? He's a stickless he player, let's yeah, put it he, that he, way. Yeah, he's, playing, he's, a, he's playing the leverless. Yeah, he's playing leverless, which he didn't do when he won back in 2017. And uh, he is now, and one of the reasons why he's doing that, you know, Daigo found out when he started using the hitbox, he was like, man, that makes you dash so fast. And so you could see Tokido with those dash throws in the previous round. Woo! Drops that combo, unfortunately. And that's going to give Kawano the ability to take him all the way to the corner. Not going to let him out for free, but Tokido still rather be in this position because now look at this. Hey, hey. Ah, that's dead? Not quite. Tokido's a dangerous man, though. All those resources ready to go. It hasn't activated that V trigger yet. And oh, the whiff! And Tokido's there, of course. He wasn't going to let that go twice. And Luke has one of the most unique V-triggers, is that, as you can see, it's not draining unless he takes damage or uses certain moves. And in fact, if he has lost a little bit of that meter, he starts gaining it back during the course uh, if he doesn't actually use any of that meter up. Got the corner yet again. He has been here a lot. Actually, hitbox sponsor in Kawano. Was the whiff though, and Tokido did let it go. Challenge oh, yeah. at negative frames. It wasn't actually his turn, but he knew where he was. And he knew he was just outside of Tokido being able to quickly counteract. Yeah, he figured Tokido was going to try to bust out by walking forward, take advantage of the plus frames by walking. Yep. And so he just challenged right away, stole that turn. You and know, just caging. Look at this. Tokido's been stuck here for so long. Not yeah, just in this round, but in previous ones. One of the things we talk about with a character like Luke is how good his normals are in neutral, but Colleen's always had very strong buttons like that back heavy kick. So as a result, Tokido's been having a lot of trouble trying to win this neutral. Mm -hmm. Here we go! Party time. The knockdown. And again. pretty light. Mm -hmm. But again, I mean, they did nerf that after the standing medium kick into activation. He doesn't get as much as he used to, but this is going to be a ton of damage. Is this going to kill? No, it's not. Oh, that's not either. We're on pixels, everybody. There's Kawada. He finds it. <laughs> Down to the final pixels here in game number one. Just game number one. And you can see Tokido's just like, man, come on, come <laughs> yeah. on. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. The big back stretch for both of these guys. A <laughs> <laughs> little unsettling there. Yeah, but obviously for Tokido, you know, that match wasn't 
terrible, so gonna stick with the loot. Not gonna maybe switch to that Yurian. I think he just has a strategy. Oh, oh no. no, that's punishable. Absolutely. I'm not sure what happened there, why he came out with that. Tokido's a guy who has strategy coming into things. You know, he's not somebody who I think is likely to make a switch once he's committed. He's committed because he thinks it's the right call. Yeah, and again, like I said, these two have a lot of history recently playing against each other. In fact, after Tokido beat uh, Kawano, and I forgot which event it was, like Tokido just kind of said, like, Kawano can't beat him. Or I mean, there was some sort of trash talk from Tokido's side. And then Kawano proceeded to defeat him in like the next two times they fought. There you go. Tokido walking in a little bit now, but you can see his whiff punish was there. He goes for the grab. God, just staring down. Even though it's like a second, it feels like a lifetime when they're staring at each other like that. Yeah, when somebody's looking at you like Tokido is now with Luke looking at Colleen, hard to approach. You know that by him not committing to any buttons, he's keeping his eye on anti-air. That's a real mm -hmm. big tell. Mm -hmm. And so Kawano's not jumping, of course, but it's also the case that Tokido's reacting to dashes just yep. like this. And that is only something that the top level players <laughs> get. If you have the mental stack to both be looking at the sky and to the feet, Pretty good. But that's exactly why Kawano dashed. He was get, had the same read as you did. No, oh, oh! no, but it didn't kill him. I'm on air throw. Oh, God, Kawano here. Could potentially make this. He's got the critical art, but he spends the EX instead. It's not enough to kill. Wake up, Super. Yeah. Oh, get him. He's got here. him. Kawano. I mean, you got to feel like you had to jump. Because if, if he woke up with the super, there wasn't much Kawano was going to be able to do. I'm surprised Tokido went with that option. Right, yes. so two times in a row now, Kawano clutching out super close rounds, and the side switch on this is so important. There have been so many of those, it's so rare to see, and here we already <laughs> see three. Oh, oh no, he didn't go for the cross up. So Kido went with a jump with like a light punch or something. Uh oh, to where? <laughs> to straight into Luke's arms. Again, Tokido sitting on a bunch of resources, but is he even gonna have the opportunity to use any of these resources? Oh, what a back dash. Has to activate here, yes. He jumps! Oh, Tokido was ready. He but not in the super, but that will be in the super. So Tokido is gonna take this round and tie it up one to one in rounds. Keep in mind, he was close to taking the previous one, too. Final round. Yeah, at this point in time, if you're Tokido, you almost want to be like, let Kawano get a lead, and then you come back. Because so far, whenever he's about to kill Kawano, it just hasn't worked out. Hmm. That string of stuff that could have been safe on block as well. Low commitment options for Kawano as he's, again, got the same. Very similar spot on screen. He's been hanging out in the sunlight here on the stage for a long time. Oh, again, that air throw from Kawano. So clutch in that reaction. Oh, no. Tokido actually got the dash forward, but something spooked him into not pressing any buttons. Kill Kawano a life lead. Tokido himself does not want to jump. For the same reason we were talking about earlier. Okay. Gets the target combo, and now a throw. The next hit into activation will probably lead into a critical art. Oh, yeah, we could actually be on next hit kills yeah. here for both of these players. Yeah, who was I talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Neither one wants to commit. You can see it in their gameplay right now. There's max resources for both. They're looking for the hit confirms. Neither one wants to jump. Neither one wants to overcommit. Oh, man. Look at the time. Oh, he, oh! Got, him. he got him into the critical art. Keep it simple. And Kawano is going to take this round and go up 2-0 to zero over Tokido. We started in the top eight here with Daigo and Tokido on the winner side of the bracket. They both could go to the loser's bracket in round number one of top eight. Kawano threatening to do it. And the way that he's been playing, it's just been consistent. There haven't really been shenanigans. It's not really been about that. He's just got great fundamentals, dude. The whiff punishes are there. The pressure's there. The movement's there. His call-outs? Oh, uh -oh. this is going to be uh -oh. bad news. Trying to hit confirm, he just didn't quite get it. So Kido knocked on the door with the medium, but 
boy. Kawano's defense was there too. Oh, oh yeah. Last time he did that, Tokido did press a light button and it whiffed last time. And so Kawano was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do the, you know, the pseudo auto whiff punish timing. Good old spacing traps. There again! We're so ready for Tokido to jump. Got to activate for the safety, for the pressure. His defense right now, but with that V-Trigger activate. Oh yeah, he kicked early that time. He knew Kuwana was gonna go for the air throw. Oh, the jump, but he didn't get the combo because he didn't light kick. Out of the corner, finally, Tokido. Oh! Oh, ho, ho, that was so disgusting. He knew Tokido wanted to move forward and attack, so he didn't have to deal with the hail coming down. So he immediately went to the V-Skill parry. Steal some space so he activates. He's got some plus frames. No, no, much. no, right. How about that? Kawano knew when to jump. He didn't get too much himself. Pressure's there. Here's Tokido. Yeah, Tokido one hit and it's game over. I mean, it's round over. Oh no, he jumped at the perfect distance. Ah, he caught him with the shimmy. And now Kawano at match point to send Tokido to losers three to zero. Truly a mark of generational change if it happens. Tokido finds the hit to start this off, though. He's got a bunch of meter. He would love to find the hit, but man, you can see how difficult it's been for him to really mount anything against the way that Kawano's Colleen's been playing. When do you find the hit? All right, gets the knockdown here. here. It, it does get a counter hit, and now towards the corner. We very rarely have seen Tokido oh! have Kawano in the corner like Twice? this. Twice? That's gonna link. He's gonna get the stun. Tokido wakes up just as he sends Colleen to sleep. All right, but Tokido again, this is the longest road back to win right now. He's down 0 to 2. He was down one round. So he has to come back from the farthest distance possible to take this set. Starting out with almost getting cornered yet again. In a consistent theme. Yeah, I mean, we saw it in the first game, too. Remember, Gacha couldn't keep Daigo in the corner, and I feel like Kawano has definitely been winning a lot of the neutral. And his stuff. You know, you were talking about some of the strengths of Luke, and part of it is his great normals that move him forward, but Kawano's even outside of those a lot of this time. And now this corner pressure, two throws in a row. Are we going to see a third? No. Tries to fake it right there. Tries to catch it with a counter hit. No jumps for you, and that trade is great for Kuwano. What does Tokido want? Of course he wants activation. So Kuwano was trying to block and be outside of that range. Tokido's looking for hit confirms now. Kuwano could get his own into super. Suddenly he jumps in. Tokido's ready. Finally. Oh, backdash in the corner. Here we go. Activation from Kuwano. Does get the throw. One mix up away. Oh, caught him with the hail. And Tokido hits a button on wake up. But Kawano had the meaty and perfect timing, and so he is going to defeat Tokido. Three to zero. Three to zero is not something that I saw coming. I got a lot of respect for Kawano. Did I think he could do it? Absolutely. Three to zero against Tokido is still nevertheless a pretty remarkable result. As you said, we could have had in winner's finals, <laughs> Tokido versus Daigo. We're not gonna have anything like that, James. It's instead gonna be Gachikun versus Kawano. And the craziest thing about that is, like I said, after Tokido defeated Kawano, I want people to, you know, I don't know if they saw it, but after he defeated him, I, I, like I said, I can't remember the exhibition that it was, but Kawano, wouldn't get up out of his chair. Mm. He was literally had the head on the table, and you could see they were trying to interview Tokido, and Kawano's just sitting in the back, and he looked absolutely crestfallen for for a longest of time, and he just wouldn't get up. And you know you could see how much he took it to heart at that point in time. And Tokido, of course, got emotional when he lost to Daigo in that first to ten exhibition set at Kimono Michi as well. Those are usually the turnaround points because then Tokido then started beating Daigo. And after that moment right there, I don't know if Kwano has lost to Tokido since then. Mm. It's a pretty remarkable run. As we take a look back at some of what we saw. And look at this. This was the Man. pixel away from death. Look at that. One pixel literally left. And then what? two pixels left here. And then, again, Tokido trying to press a button and getting caught by the frame trap of Kawano. And it seemed like every time 
Kawano read that Tokido wanted to press a button. He had the meaties, he had the frame traps, and was able to take it at the end also with the meaty. Quite a set from Kawano, as well as with all those uh, EX counters. <laughs> Now, Tokido did throw them twice in a row, right? They yeah, didn't yeah, all yeah. work out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but still, uh, that was really impressive stuff by Kawano. Hats off to him. He was looking really strong. Uh, you know, before we went live, I asked him if he wanted anything, you know, to say anything, me to say anything for him. He said, when he gets home after being in Las Vegas for a while, he wants to go on a diet. <laughs> we all do, Kawano. We all do. <laughs> oh, man, but we're moving to the loser side of the bracket. And you know what? The short shorts from Oil King, a staple of his. Unveiled. Unveiled, but he is going up against, again, we have been talking about Kawano as one of the up and coming youth yeah. in Japan. In the US, right now, I think there are two main names in terms of the up and coming youth. Chris CCH and Just a Kid. Guess who had to fight each other to make it into this top eight? Yeah. Chris CCH and Just the Kid, as you mentioned earlier. But this is definitely uh, what a. I still remember the first Frosty Faustings I went to. Yeah. There was a kid that people were telling me to look out for. Yeah. Because he's really, really, really good. He went by the handle because I'm Batman or something like that, you know? <laughs> oh, no. And, uh,. That was just a kid. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, at this point, maybe he needs to change his name to uh, just a top eight finalist, you know? He, he has actually tried to move away from just a kid a couple <laughs> of times. No success so far. This is a guy who, four years ago, came up to James and to me, and he was like, guys, I'm a big fan. First of all, thank you. That's really nice. All oh, that. Wow, that's so great. I grew up watching you commentate fighting games. I grew, you grew up watching? Wow. You got the right name out there, buddy. <sighs> uh, but he, he has he has really blossomed, and as you said, one of the best players in the world. So strong. He has already had a lot of success even before his character got the love that she's gotten over the past couple of seasons. And then now he's even more terrifying with Jury. She is a strong character. He got second at Texas Showdown. He got ninth at Frosties. He got first at the CPTNA Midwest. <laughs> he also wanted to say he's been watching EVO since he was 13, and he's super happy to have made it. Oil King, he said first time entering SF at EVO, he only got 13th, which was so close. This is the last we all expect. Year of Street Fighter V, I want to show all of my skill with no regrets. Well, no regrets here. He's gotten into the top eight, and you know, <laughs> just a kid not going to be able to shake that name, just like Xiao Hai is Xiao Hai. That exactly, yeah. The kid for years, and speaking of, like Xiao Hai, Taiwan dominating KOF earlier today. First, second, and third place. Oil King wants to continue that trend. The strongest player from Taiwan currently, obviously Gamer B was one of the players who has done really well. ZJZ, in fact, himself has done well at Street Fighter tournaments. But Oil King is the one that's here on the stage, and he is going up against just a kid. Here we go. It's Jury versus Seth. A lot of people I talked with were really sure that this would not be Seth, that this would be Rashid. But Oil King has been playing both a lot. He's gone with Seth here. Yeah, and again, you know, maybe the last time we were watching Evo, Jury was not on the map. No. This was not a strong character necessarily, but you know, the Definitive Patch and others have really done such a wonderful job in balancing out all of the characters in this game. Yeah. Nobody's really bad in this game at all. But Jury is kind of like more than that because she's not just the only not bad anymore. Yeah, she's good. <laughs> Dude, there's even jokes about being, quote, carried by Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> With no meter here, Seth stuck in the corner, and Just a Kid's going to find the hit, and he's got the W in this first round. You know who else he had the W over? DCQ, Ding Chung Chu, one of the best players in China. Hot Dog 29, Uzura, JB, and as you said, Chris ECH. Jeez, that is definitely a, uh, a, a, a list, a laundry list of strong players. And remember earlier uh, in the year, there was a little bit of the West Coast versus Midwest rivalry going on. And it almost looked like the West Coast at Combo Breaker was gonna dominate through that. And then just the kid rattled off like eight wins in a row or something to basically win it for the Midwest. But unfortunately for him, it is not looking like that this round. 
because Oil King is on a nigh perfect here to take round number two. You know who else he looked good against? Well, not Book, because he lost against Book pretty early. But then after that in Losers, he beat Flakito, Uzura, Hermes, Venatori, Smug, Problem X, and finally Higuchi. <laughs> wow, he was the one that took out Higuchi. Wow. Yeah, he did. Oil King, of course, you know, named because he used Rashid. Like, that was literally where his handle came from. But, you know, the, the after Seth dropped was clearly a very strong character. Has since been normalized a little bit. But a lot of players found that they enjoyed using this character. Sure. Uh, CN being one of them. Uh, and now Oil King here also sticking with it. But the bait on the throw from just the kid. Trying to mount some pressure with that firewall. Yep, comes in behind the shield. Backwards. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe trying to be outside of easy oh. activation point for Oil King. Here comes though activations here anyway. Oh boy. Here we saw the big reversal before. Oh, yeah, it no. yeah what? we all oh, it's still the explosion. Oil King. Pressure. Well, no, they can't dash there. That's not a that's not uh real. Just the kid interrupting, not gonna be dead yet. One more mix-up, but the chip is the danger. But he doesn't need the chip. He finds the crouching light punch confirmed into the light Hecatonkeri's punch, and he's going to take game number one. I'm surprised a little bit to have seen Just Kid dash in in that way. We'll see if that's something to look at. He starts off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he's going to dash again. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's going to happen again. Just a kid, a little too far away for that light punch to connect. Yep, minus on block, so just a kid gonna take his turn. Ah, uh, again, another not real approach right there. Good block on the cross up. All the way in the corner here. Oh. Hey, okay, EX bust out. Activation time. Here comes the mix up. Rocking with that V trigger two. I'm oh, sorry, V trigger one. And V skill two. We just saw. Oh, get the hit, but didn't confirm into anything. Didn't have a stick. Oh! oh! I'm minus, so you know what? EXDP stealing the turn. You mentioned just to get press the button, and he did again there. That's why that EDP worked before. Mm -hmm. Oh! Okay, here comes the intense oh, approach. The chase down. Yes, into the corner, suddenly Oil King's here. Oh, what a wake up jump! He did not want to take the same risk. Yep. <laughs> but look at this defense from Oil King not pressing a button. Wow, that medium kick's so good. Oh, my God, bust out with the EXDP. Oil King actually with the life lead now, but just a kid with the activation. Oh, ready for even her dash? Dude, her dash is fast. Her V trigger dash is incredibly fast and far. So Oil King now with a one round lead here in game number two, but a good start here for just a kid. Great damage off of that combo. Confirm. Oh, what a jump! Oh. <laughs> Maybe getting the bead now on those V skill timings. I catch you with the low kick, but no single hit confirm. It's definitely a skill. Oh, he's trying to activate into that V trigger. You saw that slide. He's gonna get the throw here. What's the mix-up? No dash this time because he knows that just the kid is ready for it. And using the V-shift to get out of there with the life lead, and she's likely to build up that uh, uh that extra bar of the V-gauge again. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Jumps over the intended activation. That slide into activate. Oh! It was the oh, no. air. It was out of the air, so it's not gonna be a true confirm. Okay, good timing on the V-reversal, waiting to the very end. So we couldn't get chased down. And also, Jury's V-reversal, one of the longest lasting ones, which makes it work well. But the confirm into the super off of the Hecatonkeri punch once again. And Oil King is now up 2-0 to send Set. one of the two U.S. players out of the tournament. Throughout a lot of these rounds, I feel like it's just a kid in control. And then yes. I, uh, right, that's been my feeling so far. And Oil King has managed to kind of squirrel his way back in in a lot of these situations. Hit some of his jump timings, hit some of his axe kick timings in the air to make the jump approach even a little bit weirder, have been really effective. You know, I want to talk about nerves here. Obviously, just a kid very young, first time on this kind of a stage. But he told me he doesn't get nervous. He kind of channels it into adrenaline, which is what you need to do. But, you know, you say that, and then you actually come out here and you see this audience, and the stage might be a different kind of thing. But 
Just a kid, no? Definitely looking calm and composed here. Uh-oh. Oil King has an opportunity here. Seth with that mix-up. What is it going to be? Left, right, high, low. Got the hit. Here we go. Big damage. Has one bar. Next hit. Can definitely still take it for Oil King. He gets a grab even, so just Woo! a kid. Yeah, needed to get out of there. Needed to get out of there. But again, that was another situation where a lot of control by just a kid. Almost the complete <laughs> comeback by Oil King. Hey. Confirmed it. Okay. And now another throw. Again, this time stealing that dash this time. Yes, confirmed comes. In part because she was whipping a button out there. Here's Oil King. Set up the timing for himself. Backing off. Oh. Jumps in. That was yes. a hit. But here we go. Oil King now. Big life lead this round. Gets oh, and he had Jury's power to steal to extend that combo. Oil King is at match point. His offense has just been really impressive. His jump time is great. There have been so few anti airs. That's because Oil King's been really mixing it up well. He's back on off, trying to reset the situation, disengage, and then re engage. Here we go. Oh, okay. Safe side. Oh, yeah, there's. Two kicks that Seth has. One is an overhead, one is a low. They look kind of similar. Oh, jabs out of the air. Nicely done. V shift to get out of there, but that Still. Means does not have the resources. Oil King has just been chasing out. Down. Should be able to build the super meter off of this. Definitely going to kill. And Oil King has moved on in the loser's side of the bracket. Man, he smelled blood there, huh? <laughs> you could see that. You could get that sense from miles away in the water. He knew that he was close to not only taking that round, but also taking the whole set. And the way that he dashed, he was jumping, he was dashing in. And just a kid, somebody who is usually so consistent with the fundamentals of the game, with anti-airs and all that sort of other stuff, in addition to just his excellent gameplay generally, he didn't have the anti-airs that he needed. He didn't have that ability to shut down the approach often enough from Oil King, including at the very end. That yep. said, look, hats off to Just Kid for getting up here. Yep, talking to the crowd. Uh, great personality too, really funny guy in person, but <laughs> not gonna work for him here. Yeah, again, you know, I, I will attribute a lot of that to the magnitude of the situation yeah, here. I think you might be right. I, you know, I, I still even remember at one of the Capcom Cups, I remember talking to PR Rog, and he was like, yo, I saw the crowd, and I just got super nervous. You know, it's so hard to fight that, you know? And this crowd behind us is absolutely insane. I mean, I'm just looking over here, and now I'm getting nervous again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look down, James. Don't yeah, look down. Know, right? Don't look down. Oh, it's not the acrophobia here, okay? <laughs> Definitely not that. But uh, again, you know, great job to Just a Kid. Really proud of him. And he is... Like I had talked about, the Kuano situation is only going to grow stronger from these kind of experiences. Absolutely right. Yeah, hats off to him. Oil King, though, is the one who moves on. Yep, exactly. And you know what? If you've been watching the Capcom Pro Tour, which, by the way, this is a qualifier for the Capcom Pro Tour as well. But if you've been watching about this, you all know about Street Fighter Duel. Uh, the Capcom authorized mobile game is coming out. Well, it's available for download in China right now. The global version is coming soon. So you can fight alongside with Ryu, Chun-Li, and Ken against the Suzaku Castle further into the Shadowloo City. Explore the mysterious organization. Experience the classic stories with all your fighters and recall your memories of the original Street Fighter. Your Street Fighter legend is now back on track. Various combo styles and counter, stun, combo supers, an impressive array of fighting elements and the associated combos offer you a new battle experience challenging your combat skill. The epic legend is reborn on mobile. Download Street Fighter Duel and let's fight for each other and join the journey with millions of, of players to become the best fighter and to make sure you have the time to fly. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> time I, uh, to fly. <laughs> you know what? You do that while I do the outro here. Time to fly. Thanks a lot, for everybody. We'll be back with more Go Street Fighter Five Top Eight here at Evo 2022 there in just a little bit. Are street fighters fly. The Evo team would like to give a big thank you to Fresh Cut the highlights partner of EVO 2022. 
finally a dedicated home for gaming's best moments. Find all of today's top trending FGC games, creators, and tournament highlights all in one place with FreshCut. FreshCut is the next generation creator content platform, redefining engagement between creators and fans to help communities build and grow. Remember to catch all the highlights this weekend with the FreshCut Evo 2022 Best Moments playlist live each day in the FreshCut app at 1 p.m. Pacific. Check out FreshCut over at freshcut.gg slash Evo. Ash up, back throw though, Mochi got caught for the corner. Oh, oh, the barrier, the oh, drill. Oh, Are you kidding me? Thank you to Hori for their continued support of EVO. They've been our supporters for countless years and have had top-notch fight stick and controller products for fighting game competitors. Their newest product is no exception, bringing you the Hori Fighting Stick Alpha for PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and PC. Check it out for yourself over at HoriUSA.com. Even if it had been Ants here, you know, he wouldn't have died or anything. It's not a ton of damage. Uh, it would have been positioning. Fight. But still, great game for MOV. <laughs> A little staggered approach with those crouching lights, but then too far for that combo to connect. Great so punish. he's gonna get punished, yeah. And here, no, he didn't trust it. Maybe he just didn't pull the trigger. And now, Galichi. Okay. <laughs> Both of them doing the exact same moves two times in a row. And a rare throw attack from Galichi not to handle air legs too well. We saw MOV go down too earlier and make the comeback. You gotta wonder if that's gonna be a factor again. There's the confirm close to stun. Oh, oh but the wake still up. wake up buttons. No fear from Goichi. Gonna yeah, cancel the B trigger. Right on the jab. Oh, and that was so 
strong from no, MOV. He, he did just not went. stand up, or he didn't stand up to block the overhead. Instead said, I'm going to interrupt this with my own button. Why block it when I can punish it? And then the MOV just thrown out the EX lightning kicks, catches Goichi by surprise to take that round. And yeah, he's one round away now from tying it up two to two. Well, both of them going up for air legs and an EX bird kick. They have both gone to that so rarely. And yet both players trying to be very aware of it, very cognizant of that move. Yeah, always respecting it and, and considering it as an option, but you know it doesn't come out too often now. Critical gauge on deck for Goichi. Antier is good in the and front. The, yeah, the forward dash. He thought it was gonna make it behind there, but stayed in the front. MLB now going air to air, and the air lightning case, like I said, just catches you and juggles out of the air like that. Gotta be careful that the trigger on deck for both players. Under the fireball has critical R and oh, spends it. raw into the super. Is this gonna be enough to kill? It is not, but does he quick rise afterwards? Yes. Does into the fireball safe setup. Yeah. Not too much pressure, and now MOV with the full critical R bar. Oh, the answer was so Ooh. early, he recovered though, so fortunate for him. Speaking of recovering in time, oh, oh no! Just got caught by the rapid short on the way down. Goichi now, match point over MOV. I wonder if it was one of those situations where Goichi thought he was going to go for instant air, uh, instant head stomp for the Fine. quick overhead. Yeah, who knows? In that situation, Goichi stay clutch. Walk up throw. <laughs> And we'll saying, I know you're scared. I know you're going to play defensive. I'm going to get up for the throw. The jump over this time is good. Confirm from Goichi has the corner carry. And again, fireball setup very safe. Doesn't have to commit to the dash up pressure. Antier works this time, gets under. Confirm from Goichi. And now has all kinds of offense and damage oh, for himself. Critical art is available yeah. and spins it immediately. Had to. And it's not enough. Quick rise from MOV, tons no of meter chance. to work with. You see the staggered pressure, which is the block, and that's a cross-up stomp from Koichi. He takes it over MOV, putting him out of the tournament. We had seen so many ridiculous comebacks all throughout the day. Not gonna happen this time. Welcome back to Las Vegas. This year at EVO, we're collaborating with the camera division of the Sony Corporation, helping us cover all of our competitions with a variety of Sony cameras. We're using AirPeak, the official drone of EVO, which is easily deployable, running up to 8K video or 61 megapixel still images and provides a great imaging experience. Sony offers a wide range of camera products from consumer cameras and camcorders to the Venice Cinema camera to broadcast cameras, including their latest broadcast camera, the HDCF. 5500. The HDCF 5500 offers a rich picture quality in any environment, whether you're in arena or getting bodied online. <laughs> Sony helps you capture the moment. And we got a bunch of big moments for you here at EVO 2022. Street Fighter V Top 8. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Ultra David, and I'm here with James Chen. Boy. What a start so far here. Uh, we've already had one player eliminated uh, from the tournament. Of course, just a kid going down, finishing in seventh place. But again, what a run by just a kid. Really, really proud of him. Again, you know, he said he was watched us commentate while growing up. Well, guess what? We got to watch him play in EVO top eight. But look at this match coming up here. If you were gonna name the best in the US and named the best in EU right now. These are the two names that you most people would say right now, Idom and Mr. Crimson. Not only that, but a lot of people's just straight up picks to win EVO this year before the weekend are sitting right here. And not only that, but having had a lot of conversations with folks about this bracket, these are still a bunch of people's picks to win EVO, <laughs> to come back from loser's side. And for some people, the winner of this match is the winner of EVO. Yeah. That, that, that EVO is decided right here between Mr. Crimson and 
item. Well, look, it's either going to be EU or America moving forward. And according to IDOM, that means that EU is moving forward. <laughs> there you go. You never know. Yeah, look, so Mr. Crimson, first time in top eight. Like I said, IDOM had made fifth with 2019. But Mr. Crimson's been killing it lately. He got first in the Saudi event. He got first at CPT France. He got first at Rebel Kumite London a little while ago. And in doing so, he actually beat IDOM 5-4 yep. in grands. Mm -hmm. However, IDOM also beat him 0-2 in pools. All right, so it wasn't, you know, we'll see. IDOM, as you said, a lot of people think he's the best. He won CPT NA East. He won offline Combo Breaker 2022. He won offline CEO 2022. Here we go between these two juggernauts. We got Dalsum, of course. Crimson said it's always going to be Sim for me in this top eight. IDOM said... Look, Laura, this character I'm going to be going with, I feel, he feels, that some players didn't do as well as they could have this weekend because they didn't believe in their character choices. He said he believes in Laura. Woo! That's a knockdown. But here's the interesting part about this. I mean, like, it's not even fun to joke about anymore. Everyone agrees. Dalsum, clearly one of the best characters in this game. In fact, maybe top three, maybe even top two. Yeah. You know, most people do say Luke is the strongest, but Dalsum is right there. And Laura has never really been considered one of the strongest characters, but the way that Idom uses this character is just absolutely insane as Idom takes this first round. And keep in mind, how often has Idom played against Arturo Sanchez? Exactly, a very strong Dalsum out of New York. So yeah, I don't know this character matchup. The question is whether he knows the Crimson matchup. Exactly. And again, they have played before, and it was super close. <laughs> so well, yes. Idom's trying to make it look like maybe not that close anymore. Okay, here we go. Opportunity, but the throw from Idom. It is a back throw. And so Crimson had to slide to get away from the cross up over there, but teleports out of the corner as Idom continues to take that white damage. Great health over there. Oh, the cross! Oh my, that killed! Sure did. So Crimson said he's been sent here by the Salt Mine League since you know, he won the series that they had. Yeah. But he has no official team sponsor. Big ol' hint, 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 hint. <laughs> Idom said, I'm already the EVO champion. I've already won EVO online. <laughs> now he's going for his second EVO title. Yeah, but again, he was, I mean, he's the only if, I mean, you can call it this, back-to-back -back top eight competitor at EVO this yeah, year. true. Because he got top eight last time, and he did lose to Bonchan. Oh, no, it was supposed to have been oh, Gale, and it was supposed to have been punished by the elbow. Couple of things, misfires. What is happening over oh, here? No. Oh, no, that's a bad... I know we're on the Christmas stage, but you don't got to give each other gifts like that. <laughs> Finally, Crimson with the round. Oh, man. Yeah, you got to stay in the presence, man. Come on. Here, oh, just starting off with a low punch right away. You saw Idom try to whip a... Oh, what was Crimson sliding for there? It's an interesting uh, decision. Oh, too oh. far! But too far as well, you guys! You guys! Get it together, please. There is definitely some nerves here, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go. Idom in a great position. Nice! Double slide by Crimson. Hey. And oh, you got a great comeback character here, to be honest. This could be stunned on next one. Yes! And that actually may kill. It's oh, absolutely uh. gonna kill. Crimson ends up doing it after all. Mr. Crimson again has just catapulted himself up into the top of the basically the highest point, highest echelon of the players in EU. He's been great this entire time, but there's something about the way Mr. Crimson has been playing these during the pandemic, during the lockdown, where he is pretty much considered the best in EU. Oh, only European player to make this top eight, of course. Plus frames. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yep, yep. That Dalsum's was a series. Got combos. Dalsum's got combos, but now here comes Idom. Face out a B reversal. Oh, he's so good at using Thunderclap up close. No block. That's a stun. That should be an end of the round right there for Idom. And so taking round number one in game three. Round two. Both of them displaying that they have, like I said, a great comeback ability. Shutting down the attempts, uh, attempted approach. Oh, oh that was strong good. whiffs, yeah. Huge opportunity there. Oh, the crush counter knockdown. What does item go for? Nope, no meaty elbow, just goes for the dash forward. 
Tried to hit with an overhead at point blank range. It was really close to working out, too. It would have been crushed for that. Okay, here comes the pressure, and again, I love the offensive V reversal. No back dashes for you. Wow. What the? Still here? The shimmy, death, and an item going up two to one over Mr. Crimson. Laura wins. Yeah, they both can make it fast on the other one, as you can see. And what I love so far about how Idom's playing is that he's been able to build forward movement pretty quickly. And that's usually really difficult against not just Dalsam as a character, but against the way the Crimson plays. He's usually really strong at holding onto the right spot. But oh, just no. like this, we talked about how people were, uh, Gotchka was jumping in on Daigo. Same idea. Oh. Jumping in on Crimson so tough, but Idom's done it yet again. Oh my, the whip punish with the crouching heavy punch. You might be dead because Laura just does so much damage. Dalsam doesn't have a lot of health. He does go for the reset. And now the single hit confirmed into the elbow. And Idom, just like that in match point. He is doing this like a, a, a games done quick uh, run right now. I know we got Sumi here. <laughs> fair, fair. Okay, V reversal. Yeah, you can see the kind of okay. pressure, the kind of pressure that I, uh, that Mr. Crimson's feeling using those V reversals. Oh no! Taking up some time. Yes. Taking up some space. Oh my God! What is he looking what for? What is he trying to do here? That could not have been what he wanted, and that's gonna cost him the round, the game, the set, and item defeating Mr. Crimson. It three to one. But did it feel like a three to one to you? Uh, it did. <laughs> yeah, I did. It did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I saw so many jump ins from Idom that connected over things like Stan Roundhouse. As Dalson, you again, you really want to control the space, of course. So you press Stan Roundhouse, you press Medium Kick, you press Stan Medium Punch. All these tools you got at this far range. Stan Fierce, which also connected. But as you do so, you're busy. Mm -hmm, you can't mm -hmm. immediately also block. You also can't immediately have like a dragon punch or something invincible. So you need to have time to anti-air. And he didn't have that time because Idom jumped at just fantastic timings and fantastic spaces where, for sure, if Crimson had thought you're going to jump, first you get anti-air, absolutely. But that's just not the expectation that Crimson had. And Idom was able to prey on that again and again. And that right there is a perfect example of what you mentioned earlier, right? All the experience fighting against Arturo Sanchez is not going to result in you jumping those limbs like that. It is playing the player, understanding their timing. And that's what IDOM did, as you can see here. Look at this loser's bracket. Tokido going up against Oil King. And then Daigo and IDOM. I had said the crowd obviously very... Like, you could hear them cheering for Daigo, and they were also cheering for Idom. One of them goes home. <laughs> That's true! No! Gachikun, Kawano, Tokido, Oil King, Daigo, Idom. Look at that lineup right there. That is a pretty amazing look. They always are here at EVO Top 8, but this year, you know, it's something we've been talking about all throughout the weekend here in person. Just how awesome it's been to be here actually in person again after three years away yeah, it's it just feels great i mean to to be here uh you know regardless of what your role is right if you're working the event or if you're just hanging out and playing games with friends and meeting people and whatever it is you like to do when you come out to an event like this just been awesome to hang out Dude, thanks I, to everybody for being here it's been really great i gotta tell you man i've seen some people like i feel like there's just something like there was almost kind of like this gravitational pull having evo come back like this because I saw faces that I haven't seen, not just because of the pandemic. These are people who haven't been to EVO 2019, 2018. Yeah, I saw that as well. I saw a lot of very, very old, familiar friends. And I wasn't expecting to get so emotional, but like some of these people that I, well, okay. I was. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the look in your eye. <laughs> 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 Look, uh, but honestly, like seeing some of these faces again, I mean, it really was wonderful to see. And uh, and new faces as well. Chris yeah. Lee asking people to stand up as their first Evo. There was a lot of people who stood up for that. And that just shows you how many people have been clamoring to come back to something like this. 
So, boy, next match that we're going to be seeing here is going to be Tokido versus Oil King. They've both already sat down. They're getting ready to go. We tried to look up whether there's any recent major results. Not since 2019 have they played, so I'm not even going to get into that because it's been a long time ago at this point. But it has been a while since they've had a match against each other. And look, Tokido, with the very rare for him, 0-3 loss in that last one. That is a tough way to start this top eight. Whereas Oil King, I thought, did a really great job as he was playing. I really loved seeing him. Uh, again, he was able to play against somebody who in... Uh, you know, his opponent was maybe not feeling it entirely, was maybe <laughs> uh, a little nervous, but still, the result of his also very lopsided, as you can see, 3-0. Um, awesome, awesome result. Totally the opposite of Tokido's. Yep, and if you were in 2019 and you saw that Tokido and Oil King were going to go up against each other, you'd be like, let's get ready for that Rashid Akuma match. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we might actually just end up with Luke versus Seth at this point in time now. There is still the potential for them to switch to the other characters, of course. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a switch here from Tokido again. He didn't say, uh, he said that it wasn't going to be Luke the whole way. I'm not telling you he's oh, going to. Really? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say that he's going to switch. I'm just saying, like, he is keeping both Luke and Yurian in the deck. Okay. Just, just in case he thinks one is the better match. So we'll see which one he likes here, Vaughn. And, and it's interesting, you know, obviously during the course of the pandemic and the lockdown, a lot of things have shifted a little bit. You know, Ken considered the strongest Shoto a lot of times, if you don't count Luke, uh, like right. actual Shoto guys in that gi kind of thing. And, you know, Tokido has basically left Akuma now. Yep. I, mean, I mean, he does not use him at all. And obviously, Yurian, super strong at the start of the pandemic. So that's who Tokido went to. And uh, he's been continuing with that character. You see the switch to the hitbox or the, the, the leverless controller that he's using as well. A lot of changes for Tokido. Yeah, and he changes up his character. In fact, they both do from earlier in the top eight. It's going to be Rashid versus Yurian to start things off. Okay, so it is going to be the Rashid. Round one. And here we go. Again, loser side match. Loser of this is out in fifth place. Okay, jumped in on Tokido. You know, a long time ago, he used to have, a, you know, at the start of Street Fighter V, had a slight weakness of anti-airs, but he kind of got, he shored that up. But it is still there from time to time. See them fighting in that middle of the screen, but there we go. Oil King getting the jump in again on Tokido. Mm. Toki Not the combo, but that's okay. He's got the corner. Oh, too little, too far away. Tokido's been throwing out a lot of neutrals. Oh, back throw. This is huge. The shimmy. Into the reset. Confirm off of the sec second and third crouching light punches. Okay. Really connected, just like that. We got a reversal of fortune here as Oil King. Oh, challenging on the wake up, and there we go. Now, one of the main changes to Yurian, we gotta talk about this. Obviously, the EX headbutt, no longer a true reversal. Not invincible anymore. Yes, but the EX headbutt is much faster on startup and leads to uh, good combo extensions now. I should say not fully invincible as it was before. Yes, true. Yeah, had to roll to get out of there. And yeah, you can't get out and off of the Yo, wall. Let's go! Oh Ooh. man, that was so sick. That was one of the changes too since the last time we played. A lot of characters with their wall jumps, you know, Dawson with the V skill one and the teleport. If you hit him out of there, it's a hard knockdown no matter what you hit him with. Oh, it's soft knockdown, sorry. Yeah, basically any air action if you hit out of it. Tokido does the hitting out of his air action right there as he finds the W. If you get hit out of the air while doing something other than just like pressing a button, you're going to get juggled. Yeah, but the optimization that Tokido had off of that, yeah, that standing amazing. heavy kick, yeah. it was like, I got you with a heavy kick, and most people are like, okay, that's cool. Nice anti. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Starting off well. Tokido hoping to get a whiff punish. Not quite there. And honestly, you know, Tokido, we've talked about the character choices here. I felt like this season so far, this year, oh, that was actually kind of a sick headbutt chase. Didn't work. But I felt like Tokido was kind of in like a little bit of a character crisis. You know, I hadn't seen as much success out of him, but here he is in top eight, so obviously not a problem. 
Ooh. Yeah, well, he knew that wasn't close enough to get what he wanted. Here he is, though. Throw. And now the pressure. Oh, back look at that setup. Yeah. Trying to walk up and block, but he didn't quite get the back collision <laughs> first. Challenge? Oh, boy. Oh, he didn't get the combo. Tried to shimmy. Beats out the EX. And Tokido does take the round. And there, right there, is the power of the shimmy. Was Tokido expecting the uh, EX? Mixer? I actually don't think he was. I think he was just trying to shimmy. He just like walk back out of throw range. Right. Yeah. And that's the power of the shimmy is that the shimmy acts as a throw bait and blocks the EXs <laughs> yeah. at the same time. There you go. However, it's Oil King again. He's got the corner. He's had the corner. It's not like he hasn't had chances to control things. Oh, face out the throw. A stun now for Oil King. Probably not going to spend a ton of resources. Actually spends no resources. There it was, but challenged. Yeah, that's so important uh -oh. to prevent. This actually could be one mix-up away from death, depending yeah. on the hit. Still got a mirror, yep, and now you got a guess. Oh my goodness. One defense by Royal King. Staying alive, retaining control. Oh, he tried to interrupt. We saw him do that earlier. He tried to interrupt, but you know, I think Yurian has to interrupt with, I think it's like Crouching Light Punch, but I think he was just out of a range and could not interrupt from there. So good spacing by Oil King. Mm. Oh man, he found something he liked in there. He's taking off his hat. Still feeling up, finding his way in violently. Oh, oh, okay! Dude, he has been going for the shimmy option repeatedly. Has Tokido even gone for the throw option? And see, there we go, some of the new extensions with the EX headbutt, and finally goes for the throw because he has established that shimmy so much. There's a lot of high-level stuff going on, and at the same time, a lot of it's just built on the basics. And as you said, basics right there is strike or throw. That is to say, should you just block the opponent's attack? Or do you think that they're going to do a throw, and then you got to do a throw tech? Well, those are two basically diametrically opposed options in this game. And sometimes it just comes down to that simple guess. <laughs> I mean, one of the toughest things about this game, you know, there are a lot of fighting games out there where you can react to the throw and tech it on reaction. That is not the case here for Street Fighter V. The throws are very fast, and the tech window is very small. So you have to tech through anticipation. That is why the shimmies work, because you feel this like, he hasn't attacked yet. That must mean he's throwing. And so you try to tech, and that's what causes you to get, to get hit. All right, well, he didn't like it. He didn't like how that went, James. That was not to his liking. Oil did he King. like that? or did he I don't it? think he liked it. If I had to guess, <laughs> I would say, no, sir. I don't like it. So Keto mm. with a dominating lead, but we are switching to Seth now. He didn't like it. It is now uh, SIN versus the Illuminati here. Oil King versus, Yur I'm sorry, uh, Seth versus Yuri. Oh, no, down fierce. Taking his advantage turn right there. Yeah, if you see Seth spin all the way around, and that's going to be Seth's turn again afterwards. So this character has great ways to get through projectiles. B-Skill, Kickity Kick, Tatsu. Also jumps, obviously, again. Oh, dang, going for the hard oh! combos right there. Nice. Yo, with Roundhouse on that? Yeah. That was sick. There's Oil King going with his own shimmy, then goes for the throw, and Tokido does tech it. Oh. And again, Yurian, that Azor's Reflector is still pretty good for comeback. So this is not Oil King. Oh, never mind. Jumps over to the fireball, gets it. All right, so this change working out for Oil King very, very well. Yeah, if he can really remove the fireball as an option, that would be huge for him. So far, he's doing a really good job. Hasn't he actually gone through the fireball yet with the heavy spin kick? Yeah, but obviously Tokido knows the threat. Right. Oh, and I've often said Tokido's success with Yuri and comes down to how many raw EX Chariot tackles he lands on the opponent. That one there, block. As you mentioned, press on block. Okay. Tokido gets the back throw now, trying to push him towards the corner a little bit, but they're still in, pretty much in the center of the screen. Wow. That cross up like it hits so well. Uh oh, it's going to be a mean mix. Where are you going? Where are you going? He didn't expect to hit. Truly. And now Tokido has the corner. 
Okay, not for long, but he can activate? No, he saves it. Yeah, he had to spend that EX meter to keep that crouching every bunch safe. <laughs> oh, yeah, his turn again, and Torpedo's taking it every time. Oh, finally got him! And now installs with, oh, what meaty heavy kick! Wow. <laughs> Talk about a stolen turn right there by Seth. Oil King Wait. and Seth. So what do you think? You think this is the, the this is the mix up here? Do you think Tokido now switches to Luke? Because that seemed pretty dominant by Oil King. Yeah, I think that would not be too surprising. Tokido again is somebody who always comes Round in with one. a plan. Okay, it's gonna be Yurian still. Right. He's always got a plan. And Yurian, I guess, in his view, would have been the solution either way here, whether it was Rashid or Seth. You know, well, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face, so. Yeah, or kicked right there. <laughs> and keep in mind, Tokido is up two to one, so. Ooh. Optimal counter hit damage combo. Bates out the EXDP. That's the first time I think, what? oh no, he dropped the combo. Doesn't matter, gets the stun, it wasn't even a combo, which means no scaling on this. He is definitely gonna be able to kill. Match point. Round two. Trying to eliminate Oil King. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Let's just do it. He's already, oh. he's a hit. Confirm away. Okay, yeah. Important for Oil King to stay alive right there. Yeah, because the stun was looming. Yeah. All right, he messed up the mix-up last time. How is he going to get it this time? Overhead. It didn't explode, though. So, the, oh, I can't. The shimmy. Like I said, Tokido has gone for the shimmy so many times, and now he shows the throw after the shimmy. Dashed up and blocked, expecting a button or a DP. Hold on a second. Escape right there for Tokido. It's so scary to tech throws in this game. Dashing up in patience! Ah! Jumping works! Oil Kings got pressure here. However, Tokido fully stuck. It's not gonna matter. No, hold on a sec! I thought that was gonna do it! Tokido's alive. Oh, He's alive with all the resources. Can he survive this? Oh! That's one of the changes to set. After the axe kick, not nearly as plus as before. So Tokido, of course, is gonna challenge, but Yurian with no three-frame button ends up with the trade. Tokido, however, still at match point, gets another shimmy. Drops that, the EX headbutt, not enough range that time. Tokido jumping, oh, ow. <laughs> Chopped the leg. You ever just punch somebody's leg on the floor? It's the shades of Yurian versus Makoto in third strike. <laughs> no, 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 still explode. Yeah, 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 you can't be reversal that. That's one of the big changes. It does depend on what the Seth sets up, but Oil King definitely had that right. Yep. What? I, this is such oh. a scramble right now. Oh, yeah, and they both got the resources to maybe kill him the next hit. Yep, one hit death right now. So Kido again, like I said, he has been jumped in a lot on at the end of these last two rounds. Anti-air not on point. Yeah, but you see him looking for anti-air now. Okay, ground focus. Suddenly no anti-air now. As soon as Oil King saw that Tokido was looking for the floor. Oh, he's, he's gonna, gonna get him to spend he... it. Oh wait! I thought he could be reversal there. Um Set wins. I, nah, okay, but I mean I thought he was gonna do it because I thought that was a smart decision. Because you get him to spend the V reversal anyway, and now he does not have the uh, Aegis Reflector for the comebacks. Round and so I thought that was a great decision by uh, Oil King despite, uh, you know, anyway, but then Tokido just did the reversal. Well, he sticks with Yuri in here. No switch over to Luke. It's gonna be this character. One of them goes home after this game. Yeah, it looked like it was gonna be all Tokido, but the character change for Oil King has paid off in spades right now. Yes the range on that crouching medium kick. Here we go, the setup, what's the mix-up? Oh, finally the mix-up works, but he doesn't get a full combo off of it. Tokido finally gets the anti-air, the mix-up. The shimmy again pays off. He's got Set another mirror, yeah? yeah. And, oh, he walked into the throw range. Oh, King's still here, still here, here. Pestering, trying to waltz in for something. Tokido finds the hit first, he's on match point. Oh my god. Uh, I can't take this. <laughs> I can't take this. That's point. Oh, Hold on. Got him. Got him. Just in the range to get that vacuum in there. Oh, the counter hit for Tokido gets the confirm. And now the throw option. No more shimmy this time. Okay, he does go for the shimmy again. Spending the EX to keep himself safe. Yeah. 
Check out those blinking bars on the left. Oh, try oh, it! That miss? Here we go, though. All right, that's the mix up. Okay, just jumps away. Very uh, similar way to escape the Aegis. I'm punish right too here. Too high. Mm -hmm. Tokido's approaching. He's scheming. Oil oh, King's in trouble. A, yeah. I mean, if, if Tokido can get a good hit in, then Chip becomes a Actually, no, he just got All you got to do against somebody who can hit confirm crouching medium kick well is block as Tokido got hit by that crouching medium kick. Here's Oil King. Can he find his way all the way through? No! no! He tries to steal a turn. But Tokido with the crouching light punch check. Do you remember on the winner side, Kawano, so many times going for the frame trap, so many times going for the meaty. That might be the read that Tokido likes to challenge with the buttons. Oil King there, who may not have studied or have that kind of familiarity that Kawano does, tries to steal a turn at the very end there, but Tokido does indeed check with the crouching light punches. He takes it, and Oil King has been eliminated and Tukito moves forward. As we move forward in the tournament, we'll take a little look back at the replay here between these two. There were some high moments in here. There was the confirm on the low medium kick. And it looked briefly like Oil King was going to make this happen. Yeah, you see the throw here, but there it is right there. He just got a little too greedy, and Tokido had to... <laughs> and Tokido's like, yes, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And that was like, the correct, correct, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Tokido does continue to survive, so... Tokido's still alive, again, started off on the winner's side of the top eight, but now sitting here on the loser side where... It's just so dangerous. He survives that one, but now has to face off against the winner between Ina and Taiko. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. The three who could move forward into losers uh, are Daigo, Beast, uh, Daigo the Beast, Idom, or Tokido. <laughs> hey. Oh, man. But again, thank you guys, everyone, for watching here. And just as a reminder to everyone, uh, Street Fighter League, thank you for adding the Europe Street Fighter League yeah. to this. I am so elated for the European scene. They have deserved this for so long, but this will all be streaming later on this year on Capcom Fighters and Capcom Fighters underscore JP. Well, JP. And so just get ready for all of the Street Fighter League action during the course of this, uh, during the course, the rest of this year. And of course, we have a lot more Street Fighter action later on today. Don't go anywhere. It's all coming after this break. Why? Flash kick. Oh my goodness, now watch it. Daigo gotta be careful now. Oh my sweet child of mine. Take the throw. He's gonna take it. He's nope. wet it. Ow! Defense, throw me! Wow! He said, come on, don't don't try to hit me, hit me! The guts. That was nothing but guts. That's berserk. Come on, don't try to hit me, hit me! Hit me. Look at Morpheus right there, Daigo. Morpheus the beast. That is, that is what Morpheus said, yeah. He said, don't try to hit me, hit me! Right. Good stuff. One game <laughs> for Daigo the beast. That man, not only is he kicking your ass dolo, but he got a really big team, and he do really nice things. <laughs> Oh, oh, the donkey kick, the yeehaw! He is on it. He's definitely on it right now. Great spacing. I'll take that trade any day. Good but, thing it wasn't an EX. All right, so check this out, right? So apparently, Gaio got nerfed because, you know, back in the day, back in the, in the in the last season, you could flash kick and then get a frame trap after that. Now, when you get flash kick, you get pushed all the way to the end of the screen. Now tell me, is that a nerf or a buff? <laughs> it could go either way. <laughs> I think it's a buff. Oh, oh. Let's go, X, Y, Z, Z, Y. Polluting the streets, looking like Captain Pollution. Here we go, nice. Oh, right into Free Willy, free admission to SeaWorld. Flash kick, Umehara style. This man really is just letting it fly. He's letting it go. Oh, he tried to hit him with a fuzzy guard. No way, no way, Jose, with a fuzzy. Oh, forward, Sabat. Sabat. <laughs> forward, advancing forward, never backwards. Right. Only sometimes when he's charging. Sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time, what am I saying? Okay, match point here for Daigo. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. What's up? Work, work with me. Does Birdie have any idea of the pattern? So Can he pick up on anything? Daigo, Daigo, Daigo. It's not looking too good. Your brain is humongous right now. 
Good God, it's pulsing. You see the veins. Get off of me! He's not worried about anything at all. Look at that. Oh, Look at that. No. Daigo the Beast. He is going to advance in the win. Is he dead? No, he's not. Not yet. He didn't get the super in time. Oh, my Stop goodness. It. Did you see the Sugar Shane Mosley? The Jimmy Chumity. 24-hour truck. He did the Sugar Shane behind the plasma. Daigo. Behind the plasma. Daigo, you need to cut it out. You got it. We are coming to you back from the Mandalay Bay here in Las Vegas, a wonderful venue and the home of evolution for the past few years now. And it's uh, it's it's surreal to be back here. I mean, <laughs> we haven't been back here in a while, but it feels good to be here. It really does, it really does, James. Yeah, super excited. And the action, as we knew, it's going to be great. It has been great so far. We've had some results that were very close, as I think I would have expected Tokido versus Oil King to be. We've had some results that were maybe not what some folks expected as well. We're going to move on to the other side of losers, but first let's just remind you what's going on. Hanging out in winners' finals. I'm going to wait for a little while before we get them to play. Gachikun <laughs> and Kawano. You can see the damage they did at the beginning of this thing. Gachikun, 3-1 to one over Daigo. Kawano, 3-0 to zero over Tokido. We now move down to either Daigo or Item. Again, <sighs> again, many people's picks to win Evo before Evo started were one of Daigo or Idom. <laughs> I feel like actually every time that we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see a match here in this bottom side especially, we're gonna be saying that. But it's true, a lot of people had one of these dudes picked. Yeah, I mean look, after Daigo or Idom gets eliminated, then they gotta fight Tokido, another fan favorite. Absolutely, <laughs> and, 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 absolutely. Dude, it's just, this is what happens with all the top eights, man. It's just literal heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak and you know, it doesn't matter who you're rooting for or who you're a fan of. These players put so much on the line. They put so much in their heart. And just to, to, to be on the stage and to play in this environment is so difficult. And I, it's just, I admire them so much to the point that I'm glad I'm up here and I don't have to <laughs> Look, dude, have we always, that stress. We always say we got the easy job. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. It's Guile and Laura. I talked with Idom about what if this match happens? What if it's you versus the man, Daigo? And he was like, well, you know, in the past, Daigo's beaten him and he was not super excited. Well, maybe not that phrasing. He was excited to play, but he does know that in the past, this hasn't gone well for him. So I was like, what are you going to do? He was going to go Laura. That's his plan. <laughs> he believes in her really well. Uh, he likes how the matchup can play for him, and he feels like he has some extra reads that Daigo's not going to expect. At the same time, Daigo's somebody who is really difficult to get a beat on. Hard to know what that man's going to do. And then on the same time, on the other side, when you talk with people about what makes Idom great, it is yeah, everything, yeah. but it's the reads. Yes. It's the yes. reads that he is almost unparalleled in. Yeah, I mean, th 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 I've always oh, often boy. said that the key to being good at fighting games is to never find yourself in a situation where you're like, what happened, or what's going on, or what are the options that I have here? Idom is, like, I've always said that the top players make characters look faster than everyone else who uses him. 
an item just puts you into this. Wait, what the? Wait, wait, wait. I just. Wait. And by the time you're trying to process the first decision, he's already mixed you up three more times. Exactly. Exactly. So fighting in a range that I think Adam's probably pretty cool with. Within his fierce range, okay, he backed off, maybe hoping to see a boom. But did not coax any such thing out of Daigo. Daigo waits again. Oh. And yes. So, Adam, one of the best at using Thunderclap in neutral. But Daigo, one of the best at reacting to stop it, but didn't react in time to that. Got command throw, but here comes Daigo and gets the regular throw. And now pushing him away. Anti-air on point. Oh, jump around us to make the hurt box weird, and here's mm -hmm. Idom. Oh, too fast? Too fast? He was still in block stun? Chip damage for the death? Yeah, the trigger was activated. Nothing Idom can do. Round two. There you go. What a start. In that range right there where Idom can press things like fears. Yeah, exactly. Medium kick. Forward fierce. Oh no, the unsafety. Yeah, but not a huge punish. Obviously, Daigo without that many resources spent it on the critical art in the previous round. Don't let him tell you that players in their 40s can't react, folks. Don't let him tell you that this is an age thing. Look at that dude, Daigo, reacting with sweep. I've often said, I can't react well now, but I couldn't react well when I was <laughs> young, so it's fine. I go, he had plenty of control, maybe wanted oh, here to we go. safeguard himself. Here's Idom. Is this another Idom comeback? Oh my god, he's still going. He gets Here's the hit. Here's yep. ah, The Ume Flash Kick is in the house. Dial wins. He said, <laughs> Daigo and getting a read on him on Daigo. Good luck. So hard to do. So very, very difficult. Good but again, luck. that's just one game. It's just one game. Still a long way to go for Daigo right now. Mm -hmm. And in fact, a long road for all of these players coming from the loser side of the bracket. Only Gatsukun and Kawano right now sitting comfortably and cushy in the winner's side. Alright, I'm sticking with it. I asked him if Poison's coming out during this top eight. He said it's just, you know, based on matchups. We'll see. Then one thing about talking about uh, fighting games with Idom is that he's real calm about it. He's just like really <laughs> almost dispassionate when he talks about them. <laughs> just for a matter of fact. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious why not the poison choice, you know, having the EX long tenders to go through the sonic booms. Yeah. Yeah, even regular whips to, to trade. But, you know, he's the one who's there. And like I said, he said that he's confident in Laura. Yeah, you, you mentioned that he said you have to believe in your character. And that's what he's doing right now. But Daigo is just putting up a wall. And here comes, ah, the reactions, yes. Daigo said you cannot sneak a thunderclap on me. Got the anti-air. Goes for the low option. Nice, using the EX thunderclap as a safety. But then Daigo finding that syncopated timing again for the EX Sonic Boom. It looks simple to play that kind of defense. You just sit there and block, right? Surely not so hard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. His defense has been incredible so far versus Idom. Okay, finally Idom getting something here. What does he go for? Dashes up and goes for the throw. And instantly teched by Daigo. So switch. Okay, finally maybe a chance for Idom to get the knockdown. He chose not to press once. Okay, yeah, here. Yeah, back to back, same option. And then try to steal a turn right there. Daigo checking it properly with the wake up. Oh, cross up. Back to back. All the armor. Here it comes. And you know what? We talked about the reads from Idom. No EX flash kicks this time, says Idom. And he was right. Just goes straight into the command throw. Trying to hit confirm my crouching fierce there. I don't understand when the stand fierce. I'm trying to scheme Ooh. around this hit. Yeah, and he's found it. Overhead the Lincoln! Knee, yep, that's the setup. Great, not quick rise right there. But again, his defense has been impeccable. Oh, but look at this. Idom says, I don't care. The super meaty stand medium kick. How plus? That felt so plus. How many active frames does that move have? But there you go, Idom on the board, one to one.
very calm. I mean, Fight. both of these players, right? Yes, yes, both, yes. But the craziest thing is that I really feel like Daigo is showing more emotion than Idom right now. He tried to double oh, dash no. forward. Daigo instead gets the corner. Will he voluntarily back off? He has before. Okay, that's no longer his turn. The tech comes. He's right back in the mix. That wasn't even a true combo. Yo, the offense from Daigo. We were talking up his defense. And just like that, it's his offense that really seals the deal. See, I mean, what am I telling you? It, it feels like Daigo is showing more emotion uh, in this top eight. <laughs> I got to tell you, I think you are comparing him to like 20 years ago, Daigo, which was a man made of stone. Because <laughs> I don't think there's like big emoting going on. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Everything is relative. <laughs> yeah. Everything is relative. Oh, man. Oh, there we go. The counter hit confirmed for Idom. Now with the corner pressure, here's part of those reads. What does he do next? Goes for the meaty elbow. Hard, hard to time, but... Oh, he got the crush again! Idom now one hit away. The shimmy! And Idom brings it 1-1 here in the ever so important game number three. That offense that Daigo had in round number one, I feel like it's going to be so important as this goes on because the more it goes on, Idom seems like he can solve Daigo's defense more and more. Daigo's got to not play. Oh! Uh oh, yeah. When he's on the back foot now, yes, so important, like I said, to get away. Oh, that wasn't fast enough. Daigo blocks and gets the punish. Oh, the cross counters again from Idom. I swear he makes it look like Laura's standing heavy kick is a dulcim limb. Defense! Oh, what what a tech. Still pestering. Idom's got the knockdown. EX! Daigo's out of it. He gets a punish. Now, like I said, his oh, offense! Shoot. His offense! This is where he needs to run it! All right, so he goes for the full combo here. Knockdown, flash kick. Okay, mix up the mini. And he did. He ran <laughs> all the way through <laughs> on that offense. Daigo! What? What? I don't think he meant to do back to back standing medium punch. I think it was with stand medium punch. Crouch medium punch. Didn't matter. Still worked out. Daigo with the comeback. He's up 2 1 over Idom. And again, Idom is America's last opportunity here to perhaps try to take a championship home at EVO for US in Street Fighter V. Oh. Got it. Blocked finally by Idom. And he's got the stun. That's death right there, most likely. Oh no, maybe not. not one quite. more, one more. Oh! <laughs> remember, remember, Even though he needed two more, it was okay. Remember when I talked about just putting you into the, what the, oh, he, oh, he did the, what? That was a perfect example right there. It was a reset, left, right, mix up into a throw, mix up into a jet, into a tick throw, and it was just, it happened so fast. Yeah. Okay, lovely walk up first. Daigo predicting that movement there by Adam. Oh boy. The man throw, what's the media? Yeah, goes for the media elbow. Got Plus him. on block. Here's the pressure he needs. Of course, for Guile, he does not get pressure right away again. He's gonna have to build that further. Oh no. He tried to, because when you hit Laura, the fireball goes away. So he was trying to hit her there. Tries to go for the throw, but nice jump back from the Idon. But here comes Daigo. Look at Daigo with the pressure, the offense that you've been talking about. Yep, yep that's what he needs. Here we go. It's not enough. Oh, oh! he blocked it. No punish, but still has an opportunity. Look at all those resources on Idom's side. He can't. Gotta be. He jumped. Here he goes. He needs one more still. Oh, watch out. Oh! He did it. Come on. Versus Daigo! Are you not entertained? Is this not what you were expecting from a Daigo versus Idol match? Final game coming in between these two! Daigo, oh. again, trying to turn it on. Trying to find the corner. Yep, again, that offense has been so... Oh no! That's a jump in right there from Idom. Come Command throw! What's the pressure here? Goes for the meaty plus frames again. 
I go blocking, patient. However, he's being pushed into the corner. The confirm will come here from Idom. He's got the corner. Next is stun. Okay, nice activation from Daigo there. Guarantee. Oh, well, no, never mind. Here we go. I love that offensive. Not the enough yet. From there Idom. it is. Match point for Idom versus the Beast. I don't know if he mistimed the elbow on purpose that time. That's if you do it at perfect timing, you have to delay it by one frame, but if he did it on purpose, Daigo fell for it, and here comes Idom! The unreadable man is getting red right now by Idom! And gets him to waste the bar on that V-shift! The barrage of normals is coming out from Daigo. Very active, lots of resources spent, though. Again, those offensive B reversals. I love this decision by Idom All to try to keep Daigo in the corner. Oh, and now the beef no. too far away! Okay, Daigo finding a lot of them. However, yes, again. Here he goes in for offense. If only he could build more, what? but what? hard to do. What? Here's oh. Idom. He's got super. Yeah, watch out. He could potentially go. Oh, the shimmy. Guess what, everybody? Final game, final round. Daigo versus Idom. Who is it going to be? The start. Again, he's trying to find that forward movement, staying away from the corner if he can. Is it gonna hit? Not quite. Has to go for the lows right there. Oh, here we go. Finds the opportunity for the command throw. Needy plus. Yep, caught Taigo sleeping. He knows that's plus, so he was scared to do anything. Nice V break to push him away. But again, those offensive V reversals. He's there. I don't think need one more. Taigo's life is on the line, and he throws it over the EX. The Ume sure you No! Dom is going to move forward and Daigo has been eliminated from the tournament and you can see from the crowd people literally standing with their hands on their heads can't believe what they just saw but that right there is one for the books right there you you can't get better Street Fighter than that between Idom and Daigo what a match the man who is so difficult to guess what he's going to do next, that we literally call a special move that somebody does at a random time that's unexpected, the Ume Shoryu. <laughs> we literally have called it that for decades. He has had a reputation as being so difficult to get a read on. And there was Item again and again. Command grabs, yes. Constantly <laughs> making it work as the set went on and on. Not just command grabs, finding when he thought that Daigo was going to try to escape. His reads, as we said, that is one of his major strengths. Strong enough to even get the read on yeah. Daigo. And at the end there, Daigo's undoing was actually just a miscalculation, mistiming yeah. on his own part. He was trying to anti-air with the sweep and was probably going to cancel it into an activation. But it wasn't even a distance. He just pressed it too early. Idom hadn't landed yet. And so the kick just whiffed. And at that point in time, you cannot cancel the second hit of that sweep. And it's very punishable. And Idom took advantage of it. And there we go. Idom is going to fight against Tokido and Gachakun and Kawano, however, here on the winner's finals. In winner's finals, Gachikun and Kawano. Gachikun, again, having taken down Daigo, three games to one. Kawano having taken down Tokido, three games to zero. They have already slain some of the all-time greats of fighting games. <laughs> and now in winner's finals here at EVO, they're guaranteed top three, but neither one is going to be satisfied by that. When it comes to matches against each other, I tried looking it up, and, you know, I did find some results, but nothing that was, like, major and recent. And, again, you know, the game has changed. If you haven't watched Street Fighter V in a while, maybe since the last EVO, then some of the mechanics are different. We've been talking about V-shifts, for example. That is a new thing. Some new characters in there. Lots of characters have lots of new options. So there's lots of stuff that's changed, and I'm not really going to talk about what happened in 2018. But <laughs> here in 2022, we have Gachikun, we have Kawano in his first Evo Top 8 here in Vegas, trying to make it happen. And this is an all Japan affair here. They came in on the winner's side. Uh, all 
four Japan players mm. on the uh, Japanese players on the winner's side. I'm One so of them has gone go. out, and that is Daigo. However, Tokido's still there, and then we're gonna end up with another country kill situation here where Japan is gonna go up against Japan. But again, whoever wins this, guaranteed to at least be top two. Three players from Japan remain. Only item from the US and from the rest of the world remains. Again, Gachikun said that he wanted to be the first to win both the CPT and EVO in Street Fighter V. Hasn't happened yet. Kawano, you know what he also said? He said, subscribe to my YouTube. <laughs> This, Truly yeah. the next generation. There is the young entrepreneur right <laughs> yeah. there. I, yeah. I appreciate it, Kawano. <laughs> Tech early on, so showing throw early from Gatsukun and Kawano. I mean, honestly, the way that Kawano defeated Tokido, he is just looking on fire, and it looks like it's continuing oh. here. And of course, a little ironic to say that he's on fire considering he's using Colleen. But, I mean, he's putting his opponents on ice. Honestly. Gotcha Kun with the knockdown. So we have seen Kawano go back to this again and again, trying to EX counter. Oh. We saw it a lot last time. Didn't work this time. Gotcha Kun's got the knockdown. And maybe, no, he's not going to go all the way through. But he's down to a grab or a hit for the dub. No? What a Kawano lives. Low. Yes. Uh oh. Uh oh. I mean, still gonna be tough. But at least this is the start. Uh oh. No, no more V trigger for Kawano though. Uh oh. Still trying to move forward. Plus on the medium. Chip Here. damage is a threat. Chip damage is a threat. Gatsukun can end this really easily with a eagle spike and a super. Man, would Kawano counter? Is he the greatest <laughs> of all? He jumps immediately. I feel like that was a frame perfect jump, James. I know, right? It's like he just knew the moment. Oh, and that's great for Gachikun. Didn't have to spend a single bit of resource to get that victory, so he's going to come here into round three with a full bar. Mm. Yeah, we've seen the, the, the spacing trap that you talked about that Kawano's used. Yeah. So Gachikun not going with the light button, going with the medium button. That's how you stop those spacing traps. Or just by taking the big ones. Hold on. Not finding the hit. Most of the way into the sunlight. Ooh. Straight on wake up. That's great for Gatsuku. Wow. Tried to get a crush counter there, maybe on a back dash or a button press, or even a throw with. He's got that V trigger activated, but you can see, hasn't been able to do much with it so far. Whoa! Ooh. Trigger two. There it is. Okay. Ready to go. Super. Oh. Activation. He's got a lot of meter. He's not going to go for the super. He wants to make sure that it is going to kill. Anything into that super is most likely going to be a death count. Just oh. didn't expect it. Oh, he was like two pixels away from throwing him. <laughs> yeah. Low all of a sudden at the very end. Kawano's oh, going to find game number one. Woo. I mean, honestly, Kuano in round number one, like I said, he was looking like a man possessed, you know, ready to take things. Oh, the then Gatsukun just ran almost right through him. Obviously, Kuano started making the comeback in round two, but was halted. But now Kuano taking round number three, going up one to zero. And right now, by the way that you know, the four players on the winner side of Japan have been playing, Kuano looks like he's the most focused. Getting these counters as well. I mean, has those he, have been amazing. Has he missed that? Any of them? Some mean, of them that, have been thrown, but okay, he's but got yeah. a good success rate, though. Gotcha. Okay. Deep in the darkness. He's not been able to battle his way out of this right corner. Yeah, both of these characters. Oh, what a confirm. Oh, oh too far away. Too far. Oh, speaking of too far away. Yeah, Kawano. Done a fantastic job. Remember how great he did his thing outside of Luke's ranges too? Seeing the same kind of thing. Not like stun. Oh! No EX spinning mixers for you. And Kawano basically is saying, you know what? Gotcha, Kun, you are not going to be the first player to, to win both a Capcom Cup and an Evo. 
Yeah, and maybe the last chance for that to happen in Street Fighter V. No player's done it within a calendar year outside of Mochi. We did it in Street Fighter IV, still probably one of the most impressive oh, yeah. runs ever. Again, back under the moon. No! Gotcha Goons! Okay, finds his way out. He's got that tricky. He would love to activate. Oh, what? That moon sweeping the crush. Oh, -ho, making it tricky. So Kawano can't counter easily. Here he goes. Oh! Wow! I love it. Single I love it. hit of the spinning mixer into the super. And that makes it a little bit easier to do. Quarter circle forward plus light punch. Quarter circle forward plus kick. And that'll get you the combo right there. Gotcha Kun ties up this game. He did need to take a risk. I was just going to talk. I was just going to bring it up. He did need to take a risk to make that happen because Kawano's D has been fantastic. So Kachi Kun tried to go back to the well. And I think Kachi, uh, Kawano's D again. Just looking fantastic. Kind of His offense is here too. How much is he willing to spend for this combo here? Not gonna spend any meter, just keeps the meaty going. Frame kills for the meaty throw. And there's the conversion. EX air throw oh, doesn't even need the air throw. Gotcha Kun is gonna go down and Kawano with a commanding lead here. You know, before this top eight started, we were talking with a bunch of other knowledgeable folks about Street Fighter V, and one of the things people said about Kawano is, yeah, like, he's super good. We all know that he's super, super good. Do we think that, like, this is his time? That was the question. Is he ready yet to win EVO? We all think, like, in the future, could he win EVO? Sure. Is today that day? Is he already ready for that? I think that was the only question. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him do great in other tournaments in the past. Like, that has happened, but this is a bigger stage than anything else. And so far, even if he doesn't ultimately win EVO, by taking down Tokido 3-0, to zero, and then at least being up two games to zero versus Gachigun, I think he's already answered that question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty. I can sound like a genius. I would have said yes even before the top eight started. Yeah, well, some people did say yes, but I'm just saying some, you know, there was a discussion about it. <laughs> right, for sure, for sure. But like I said, it's easy for me to say that, you know, and now that he's doing really well here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Of course, David, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah no, some people were on board, of course. And nobody would be surprised. Uh, but again, Gacha Kun, former uh, Capcom Cup champ, as we did. Oh, did he switch to V skill too? He did. Throwing a different look at Kawano. This is something that he's kind of practiced on the side a little bit. And now it looks like he's busting it out to see if he can use that air mobility to catch Kawano off guard. But we've only seen it come to play once. Kawano. Met him in the sky! Kawano is one round away from making grand finals at EVO without losing a game in the top eight winner's side. Kawano is just playing unlike, unlike I've ever seen him play. Now, again, has he played amazing? Yes, of course. But today, it might be his day because he is playing so Solidly and so dominatingly. Look at his D here. Oh. Just waited it out. The hit comes, he's yeah. in range, and Kawana will turn this into the corner. Gotcha in big trouble. Dashes in to try to find something, anything to get going. Oh, yeah, yes. there's that V skill okay, too. Okay, Finally. Okay. Yep, turn it into damage. Turn it into your own corner. Oh, low. okay, the empty low works this time. Throw, not quite stunned. One more mix-up. Tries to do empty... I love it. I love it, James. If he is going to win this, it's going to have to be with weird stuff. <laughs> I'm being totally honest with you. No, if I... he's going to take this dub right now over Kawano, whose defense oh, is genius right now, it's gonna he's going to have to get weird, man. Let's get weird out here. <laughs> oh, there we go. I mean, look. We all know he has the power of the wind, but the power of the weird? Is, is that what we've got here? Mm. Oh, oh. Just jumping back in the corner. Yeah, and see there, you see the ability yeah. to change your jump art is such a powerful tool in the game, like Street Fighter, a very ground-based fighting game. Oh, B-reversal out of there. Yep, nice. 
Very little damage, taking just that light kick, and now he's back out. And yeah, so every time he jumps, you have to think about potentially that V skill coming out. But Kawano taking the life lead off of that back throw. Activation, got to block this. Oh, oh too early. Got to block, go. Oh. Here's Kachikun trying to make it happen, trying to take a game here. And the, yes. The scary part about that is that honestly, the throw might not have killed but it was still going to be a checkmate situation. He had no V trigger. Gacha Kun had all the meter for the super. So even if that throw hadn't killed, that's why Kawano was so adamant about teching it at that point in time, because he couldn't Round take the one. throw. Let's get weird, baby. Gacha Kun. Let's get weird. Surviving. Oh, and now he gets a big jump in and confirms into a super damaging Let's get weird. combo. Oh, oh, oh. Stun, yes. Is he gonna go for a reset here because of a little bit of the scaling here? Nope, just gonna go for the knockdown. Kawano trying to find what was so successful for him before. Back when the play was much more conventional, much more about the ground. Ooh, well, we talked about the interesting air movements, having that new weakness, that nerf. Oh, there's the, the burf for uh, Rashid. Obviously, they changed the trajectories of going off the wall you know, to make it so he can't escape as easily, but still, there's definitely a lot of new uses out of it. Hey, Kawano keeping his eye on the anti-air. <laughs> the match has become so much about that, so much about the air approach. So here, Kawano trying to settle it down. Just make Ooh. yes or no choices, and he's making a lot of them. Making a lot of right ones. Goes for the straight up combo here, gets the knockdown, sets up the frame kill into the throw. Uh oh, is, oh, uh oh, 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 press oh, medium oh. kick here. That was weird. Here he goes. Oh, what? Yeah, you're gonna take the throw when you have. Oh, 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 oh. He's so close to stun. He faked the empty jump. He pressed that heavy punch so late. Look at this damage. What's the mix of? Oh, no. Where are you going? Oh, no. He didn't get the kill. And he does ultimately got. Oh man, all over the place. This Benny Jesser has mastered the weirding way. I've never seen him play this wild. And he needs to do it. He's making this uncomfortable for Kawano and he has tied it up two and, games to zero. And he has had this V skill too in his pocket. It is coming into play because not only is it a great jump arc changer, it's kind of the combo V skill. There's always like the utility V skill, the combo V skill. And really, honestly, V skill too for Rasheed gives him some sick conversion. Yes, this oh is the bad play right there that no. made him go up two games to zero. 91 seconds, son. <laughs> right? That actually is like maybe a record in top level play. That was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Gachkun caught on the ground. Yeah, That's but not he, he, made wants it, to be. he made a comeback last time. He wants to be up there with the clouds. Oh no! Kuano just going for a defensive throw and Gachkun didn't right. press any buttons. Here we go, the Asar. Gotta get funky. Yep. Gotta get funky. Yep. Oh, uh -oh. What? Uh oh. Oh, the no! Kawano! Okay, does find the round. Match. Maybe a little unsettled though. Match point for Kawano. Dude, the, the mix-ups that he has with that B skill 2 are ridiculous. There we go to the corner. Oh, good block. Got hit out of the air. Can't get out just yet. What a decision. That's what Kawana was looking for before. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, that's punishable. And see, this is what I mean by it. it's the combo V skill. Look at this. What? Is, what? <laughs> no! What? Come on! What's a poor Kawana to do in this situation? What is happening here? When that V when oh, that V oh, skill oh, oh. when that V skill debuted, people were like, "Okay, this is broken. I can't believe you gave this to him." But V skill one was just too useful for Tornado in the roll forward for the plus frames. We haven't seen it into this kind of level of surgical precision being used that Gatsukun is demonstrating here. Catches it. Here's Gatsukun. He's got the corner. Here he is. Trying to press. Kawano in trouble. Gotcha Kun will he make this complete comeback? He's threatening to do so. Kawano trying to stay solid. Out of there. Out of there. Using that precious trigger resource as a way to escape. 
And if you're Gotcha Kun, you're okay with that, honestly. Up there with the birds? I've heard a bird loud. Bird Rashid is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, they gotta change the voice for uh, Rashid to say, like a bird! Here comes oh, Kawano. Here goes Can we. Oh, oh boy, Kachikun was committed to blocking. He's in trouble all the of a sudden! Stun. It's oh Kawano who has him on the ropes! Okay, but Kachikun's gonna come out of this with full resources. The throw! Oh, the... Where is anybody? Okay, Kachikun. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh! He spins okay. one of the bars? And no, no. What a challenge. This is that grounded play, though, that Kawano has had success in. So Gachikun trying to go to the sky. Anti-airs for Kawano, though. Kawano, can he do the It's not enough, not, not enough. enough. Look at the time as well. 13 on the clock. We're running out of time. Gachikun has run out of life. And Kawano manages to barely survive the onslaught that Gachikun was mounting. He was climbing all the way up to that hill and at the very apex. He was cut down by oh, Kawano. Oh, did you see the reaction from Kawano? Throwing his head back, arms straight out, pump, fist pumped down there. He is guaranteed top two, but you know, for an event like EVO, honestly, it's all or nothing, man. Get, being guaranteed top two doesn't mean anything. It's about that first place. It's about cementing yourself into the history books. Look at this ending right here. Got the hit. And then the tick throw is going to do it. Gotcha Kun tried to stay solid and not get baited by the shimmy. But Kawano went for the throw. And Kawano barely staves off that amazing comeback by Gotcha Kun. A genius adaptation by Gotcha Kun, if I'm honest <laughs> about that. I absolutely loved it. When he was doing things that were off the wall, I guess literally, he just, <laughs> that was exactly what he needed. That grounded play, which he's great at, to be yes. clear, mm -hmm. in general, he was being outplayed at. Kawano had fantastic footsies, just excellent pressure, excellent defense against the normal stuff. So Gotcha Kun just threw a monkey wrench in it. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with that V-Skill 2 change was so much more unpredictable. And it was that unpredictability and that ability to stay away from where Kawano had that grounded control. That was a huge part of why that did almost happen for oh, Gachikun. Man. I mean, that's a heartbreaker for Gachikun, of course, but he's going to be in losers finals. He's going to be waiting there to see who comes up. Is it going to be Tokido or Idom? But he is still not out of this yet. I mean, Tokido especially knows this more than anybody getting into grand finals from the loser side, getting a reset, taking the tournament. Definitely possible. And, uh, <laughs> Evo, man, we're here in the top eight for Street Fighter V. Woo! We knew it was going to be good. But oh, yeah. some of these matches are among the best that I've seen in Street Fighter in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. But again, you know what? You don't want to look. You clearly do not want to miss any of these matches. Do not leave your seat. You have to go to the bathroom, grab a snack, go I for it. Do, actually, but still, yeah. make sure you're back and planted on that chair to watch the matches after this break. Shoutouts to Astro Gaming, the audio partner of EVO 2022, providing audio for EVO tournament stations with their A40 headset and Mixamp Pro TR products so competitors can have an amazing tournament audio experience. Go visit astrogaming.com to pick up your own A40 headset, Mixamp Pro TR, or audio-related accessories.
I'll handle this one personally. Was she again? Coming soon to Skullgirls Second Encore and Skullgirls Mobile. Check out the latest apparel from Tenno. Brand new officially licensed products featuring Tekken, Guilty Gear, The King of Fighters, and some of your favorites from the fighting game community, like Eris from Avoiding the Puddle, Tasty Steve, Exo Academy, and more. You can scan the QR code or visit 10-o.gg forward slash merch. Years and years ago, and finally take an evolution title for himself. We've seen Takedo in the spotlight. We've seen Daigo in the spotlight. Is this Bonchan's day? Here he is in grand finals, one game away from doing it. Big Bird fighting for his life, but has been the dominant player so far in the set. And Bonchan is just running through him. He's going to get the stun. Is he going to put himself at tournament point? The he reset. just needs one more hit. There it is. A perfect. Another perfect. Bonchan, tournament point. You can feel the energy in the crowd. The cheers are surging. This is his moment. Big Bird needs to win two rounds to stay alive and reset the bracket, and that would start. be such a relief for him. Here he is, he's on his road right now. But again, Bonchan finds the jump away, and that's what he's needed. In the corner, it's been death. When he finds his way out, Bonchan has been able to get it done. Oh, goes low, big Here damage. Here we go. Look at that, 50%. A the throw, throw close and to stun. And this is the match. No stun, no stun. Jumps away. All right. Here's the what opportunity, Caterplay. He he's throw, still in there. That's a block, not punished. Not punished. The tension is incredible. Missing roundhouse punish. Oh, he just got clipped. Him. It's even. He not finds throw. a throw, not enough. Oh, what but a tech. tech. He ticks for the match. No one wants oh, to fight. He, he countered, no he confirm. confirm no he confirm, confirm, no confirm on the jab. Oh, from Big Bird. Oh. He's still in it. He's still alive. Big Bird will not say die. Here this, we go. This, this set, it's either for the reset or for the tournament. One round away, again, the tension. Missed sweep punishes, difficult range. The jabs, both playing the game, but both looking a little tentative here. Oh, yeah. But he doesn't want to let him out of the corner. That's the critical story here. He gets out. And here we go, Big Bird with this pressure. Delayed V reversal, smart. Oh, got one hit, but nothing off of that. Here oh, he makes it out. One meter spent. Building that V trigger bar again. Oh. Gets another hit. Here we go. That's, That's the stun. stun. Okay. He's going to be able enough. to do a lot of damage. He's not going to be able to kill. He goes for the goes reset. For the reset. The finds it. Will it be enough? It's not enough. enough. He's oh fighting for his God. life. He lands the critical arc. He's still in this. It's not going to kill. He's got one more chance. This, this is his moment. One mix up. UAE. What? Oh, and a counter. From Bonchin. He jumps back. He read it and he takes it. Bonchin in this is moment. Welcome back to Evolution 2022. If you just tuned in, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> there have been hey, so what many. what happened? <laughs> what happened? There's been so many great matches here, and I hope you have been around watching this whole entire set. 
because it's only going to get better. Idom, who had one of the matches of a lifetime, one of the greatest matches I've seen in Street Fighter V versus Daigo. And uh, now he has to go and face Tokido. Oh, 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 back to back. Doesn't get any better than that. Oh, my. And what? Oh, man. This is going to be a crazy match again. But really curious to see what Tokido decides to go with because it really feels like to me, Idom is just all in on this Laura. Yeah, it does seem that way. So, what is Tokido going to do? He, we, he showed the Luke. Didn't really work out for him. Mm. And he's had more success with Urien so far. Yeah, that's true, including yesterday where he only played Urien all the way through. Here we go. This is what's happening. Top four. That's where we're at. Gachikun, of course, having lost just now to Kowano. Tokido and Idom coming up now. Winner will get into losers finals versus Gachikun, <laughs> who, you know, again, although having been sent to losers, boy, if that had been a first five, Maybe a different result, man. He was really catching on to things. But Kawano stayed alive, stopped the bleeding. You know? And Gotcha Queens in Losers Finals. I just have to add this. Someone just won a PS5 down there. Nice. <laughs> in a rock, paper, scissors contest. <laughs> this is what you're missing out if you're staying at <laughs> yeah. home, okay? Yeah, there you go. The opportunity to win a PlayStation 5. But here we go. You can win oh, certainly a lot more than that if you can survive this match. It is going to be Tokido from Japan versus Idom, Evo champion versus Capcom Cup champion. That's all we've got. Oh, no, Kawano has not. He has not done it. No. He's the only one that has not cemented himself into either of those victories. And so, and he's the one waiting right now in the grand finals. Idom indeed going with the Laura. Tokido going with Yurian. Mm -hmm. Showing that this character still has the juice, but again, look, it's the similar situation with Idom, right? Is Laura a top tier character? Is she considered one of the top five? No. I don't think, I don't think uh, Colleen is either, and she's hanging out in the Evo Grand Finals. Right exactly. Now. So Tokido knows it's about the player. And so you know what, Urian might be a little bit nerfed, but he is still put in the work with this character. Oh, there we go. There's that anti-air from Laura, that standing medium punch. Such a good anti-air. Activation time. Mix. Yep, the pressure. I love Tokido mm -hmm. jumping forward. It was so good. Forcing the issue. Again. Forcing the issue again. Can no, boy, that's just a real tough spot to be. Yeah, because here's the problem. If Idom hit a button in the air to stop that crouching heavy punch. He would have landed on the mirror. He would have kicked the mirror, and then most likely, even on a trade, Tokido probably would have been able to combo if Laura just didn't die outright from the mirror. So that was definitely a KO situation. That was a, a checkmate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Look, we've been talking about how Urian has been made a little worse this season. And how a big part of that is the fact that he doesn't have full invulnerability on EX Headbutt anymore. Well, he still does have throw invulnerability <laughs> on EX Headbutt. It can be important versus grapplers. Oh, nice counter hit confirm. And just, oh, he was trying to potentially go through a fireball or something, but it just worked out anyway. Tokido walked into that EX elbow, giving Idom a little bit of a chance here. Nice confirm, three lights into the regular throw. Dang. Oh boy. Pulling out the okie dokes now. All the way in the corner, it hits! It's not death yet, Tokido lives just barely. He's gonna try his only fully <laughs> in full option. And can you Ooh, believe it? Idom knew exactly what was coming. I swear I saw Laura going for a throw. I, the hand was out, the fingers were spread. I thought he, she was definitely going for the throw. But no, Idom with the read, the call out, and Idom. I mean, it's against Mr. Crimson that we saw, it felt like it was almost like a, a, a games done quick tournament. And he's trying to do the same thing to Tokido right now. Adam's usage of the overhead has actually been amazing in this time. It's not something you seek onto very often, but he's really made it work. Oh, just outside of the range, but no whip punish from Tokido. Wasn't ready for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not like uh, his character gets a ton off of max range crouching medium kick anyway. Here we 
we go. Party begins. No, no, oh, oh, my God, my comp's in there anyway. Oh, I love the EX as an escape. Oh, 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 oh. There it is. Ooh. up the fierce. That trigger survives. Here for Idom. Big plus rank advantage, meaning it's his turn. He gets to do whatever he wants. <laughs> Out of Tokido's there. Tokido's gone, yeah. What a neutral jump. It's not enough to kill. Uh-oh. Oh, this is so oh. deep challenge. <laughs> not going to let you. <laughs> All you can do is laugh, James. <laughs> <laughs> the bravery of that. The bravery. I mean, is it bravery or, as you said, is it the reeds? Is it the reeds? Well, of reeds? course it's the reeds, yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Idom does not. Just, just no care in the world. No no sense of danger in his heart. Oh, oh could you not? Okay. Uh-oh. Here we go again. Oh, everything, I swear, is a leak. Again. He's made it so uncomfortable for Tokido. And he prioritized the reset. And this actually might be it. Not no. quite, not quite. Violence out of there. Just, I mean, so, we, we, look, it's just so unfair that Idon plays Laura, and when he plays her, she gets different frame data. Because <laughs> it feels like she has different combos, oh, different fireballs, different range, or something. Because I, this character just, I mean, I don't. The takeout. Daigo and then Tokido back to back is the threat Idom is currently making. Tokido, look, we just saw a really nice almost comeback by Gachiko. Maybe Tokido can do it as well, but right now it's seeming tough. Yeah, and again, it's those reads and that similar situation again that I mentioned that Idom is so good at making you just going, wait, what happened? Wait, what happened? Wait. And then by that point, you're already dead. But here comes, oh no, this is big here. Here's the start for Idom. Ah, oh, nice. nice punish, full punish. The EX headbutt combo extension. That's okay. punishable as well. Yeah, he was hoping to see a button from Tokido to armor through. And okay. there's going to be a round. And yeah, you see the nod from Idom. I was thinking the exact same thing. Like, that's fine. That's fine. You know, you're going to take that round. But Idom, oh, the crush counter. How many crush counters has Idom had already? God, the way he uses Thunderclap at ranges where you can just get poked and hit. It, it, he Only he does that, I feel like. Yeah, and his usage of the fact that you can't just walk backwards when she's charging it up is tremendous. Yeah. Oh, boy, here we go. Oh, there's oh, the challenge. Okay, there we go. The yep. There we go. Nice. Oh, that's going to be a big combo. Yeah, it is. Into a really up-close situation. Tokido's in trouble all of a sudden. I know. Just like that. Look at him trying to around. escape desperately, and he's not going to do it. His desperation to escape is palpable, James. I feel it from all the way up here. And it's I, match I, point I, I, for Idom. Things that... Oh! Plus frames! Goes for the command grab, the reads, the crush counter again! And here we go. Okay. Dashes up and blocks. Okay, good check from Tokido with that crouching medium kick. Tokido did win the first round. Nice, and there we go. Lands that EX chariot tackle. Like I said, very important. Tried to check the fireball with that crouching light kick. Great! Right. Avoidance. Is he beginning to make the counter reads? Here comes the explosion. V-Trigger activates. Usually, Idom pretty good about chasing the oh, jump wow. backs. Yeah, just bad range. Very rare. Oh. He backed off! It's because he knew exactly what was coming. Here comes. No, it's a link! It's a stun! And Idom is in fact going to take out Daigo and then Tokido back to back! And he does it in the way that I feel like only Idom does. I mean, I made the joke about the frame data being different when he played. I feel like, I mean, we, there's a lot of Laura players out there. Sure. But the way Idom, the decisions that he makes and the way that he literally just steamrolls you once he gets one read and he just never lets you escape or get away, Idom. Continuing forward, taking down Daigo and Tokido, and now he has to fight Gachikun. Did you see that? Trying to get away. It's so standard for Uranus to go for that kind of stuff. And Idom had exactly the solution. I think, to me, the tale of that match was the end of that one round where 
Tokido was just holding up back for his life, dude. He was backdashing for his life. You could sense just how much he did not want to be close to Idom, how much he needed to disengage. And he disengaged all the way into the corner, and it still didn't work because he still lost there. <laughs> that, that set of moments to me is the definition of what happened during that set of Idom's just fantastic reads. And even somebody like Tokido knew that the reads were so strong that his chance was only in escaping and right. not in contending with them point blank. Right, and Idom read that desperation, yes. had the answer the entire time for every option that Tokido took, but again, this is the thing, right? Fighting games are about trying to get yourself back into the position where you know what's going on, that you're ready to, to fight again. But when Idom starts getting that pressure on you, you just, like I said, you have no idea what's happening. And you want to get the heck out of there as yeah. much as possible. <laughs> yes. But then that desperation translates into predictability for Idom. And nobody is better taking advantage of that desperation than Idom. I feel like. Yeah. I mean, really, honestly, I don't even think that's an exaggeration to say. At both causing and taking advantage of desperation. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we go into Losers Finals. Now, we know how Gachigun got here. He got here, in, I would say, in an unusual way for somebody who's in Losers Finals. Typically, when you're in Losers Finals, uh, well, obviously, always you have just lost. You've just lost Winners Finals uh, if you're coming from his side. But usually, it happens in the sense that you feel down on yourself. You know, you, maybe you lost big time. The way that he lost was so close and in, included such a great comeback and set of counter reason adaptations that I don't think that he would be coming into this next match feeling like that was a bad loss. <laughs> it was a loss, but it was so close. So it's a different position than usual. And of course, Idom comes into this after having taken out two of the best players of all time. Well, 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 I mean, you could also look at it too that he was like, I was so close and now he wants that chance so badly oh, that yeah. he might be he not, does. not looking at this. Oh, the hit out of the air. Important. But gotcha Kun again, is another one of those players that can definitely run you over oh, sure. with the momentum. But you see there, right there, the perfect read by Idom. He went for the shimmy. And how do you counter shimmy? By pressing buttons. Gotcha light punch right there from Idom taking that turn. Oh! Great interruption, great defense. Oh, what a tech by Gotcha Kun. Now he turns it on for himself. There's no good reversal available, of course, for Idom. He's stuck, but he still wakes up and Gotcha Kun on reaction, maybe? I don't know, but that was fantastic. Very fast, if so. Nicely done by Gotcha Kun there. I mean, Idom coming fresh off the 3 0 over Tokido there. You know that he's got a lot of uh, adrenaline coming in here. Gotcha Kun trying his best to defuse that adrenaline. And there we go, changing your jump arc to prevent hey. the anti air. Oh no, the second one can hit, unfortunately. Yeah. But hey, Gotcha Kun still has the corner. Yep, corner is so important in this game. Oh, the cross counter. Gotcha Kun is looking strong. I mean, the way Idom has been playing, it almost looks like he can't be stopped. But Gotcha Kun, right? Uh oh, party time. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, not quite there. However, still close enough for the grab. Charged it up! Plus frames again, advantage right on backs off the reset situation. Oh. He blocked that? It's still going. Oh, he confirmed it! Out of the, what a smart V reversal. Absolutely. But again, still stuck, still stuck. Here's Idon. Oh, he too far away. Missed it. What is happening? Still alive. He's still alive. Wow! There were. I don't know how to count how many interactions there were that Idom had to guess right on to make that round happen, and he did. It's every time. Uh, he ha he ends these rounds with literally like five or six decisions in a row to win. It's why Laura isn't considered necessarily one of the strongest characters in the game, because she has to do all these reads. Yep. But if you're right all the time, <laughs> then it's not a problem. That's such... Oh, oh my god. <laughs> That's such a great example of what we're talking about. He's putting different looks on all this stuff too. It's not the case that like he has some tell that he goes back to the same well over and over again to try to get the same water. No, he is moving all over the landscape, going everywhere. And even in that same round, there were two big looks on similar situations that he had the exact opposite Round sides on one. and he was right both times. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't know. This is just absolutely blowing my mind right now. It's so crazy. And again, if you're Idom and you get hit by that air eagle spike because you tried to anti-air, 
I mean, at this point, do you care? Like, you get hit once, it's not, doesn't lead to a mix-up. And if your anti-air works the other time, oh my god, the light kick beating, the heavy kick, isn't that what the heavy kick is for to go over things like that? <gasps> okay, okay. She has it. What? Dude, getting thrown on the opponent's wake up is one of the most painful things. Jumping. Oh, what the heck? Open to find the crouch medium kick. Gachikun was out of there. Okay, yes, the activation point comes, and just like that, Adam's got the corner yet again. Oh, there's that meaty stamp medium kick. Still alive. <laughs> He's just right too many times. You know what? The key to winning fighting games for everybody watching is to be right all the time. Ah, let me take my notes. Yes, <laughs> yes. Ah, to guess correctly. Oh, man. Okay, well, Gatsukun definitely trying to take that lesson to heart, but there's that crush counter again from Idom, always finding the right time. Counter hit combo. <laughs> this Rashid has spent a lot of time on that wet floor, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy, you touched the button. One more mix up. Okay. Oh. Disengaging. Re-engaging all of a sudden and waking up with the jab. Why would you push a button? Why I don't know. Why would you land with a button? Why would you land with a button? Why? I don't know. I, 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 I took. <laughs> two, zero, just like that. Look at this expression here. Now, to be fair, also it's pretty chilly in here. But, <laughs> but at the same time, if you take that out of context, like that is almost everybody else's expression I mean, in here as well. The problem is right now is that Gachikun is sitting right next to the ice cold heart of Idom right now. That is why it is that much colder where he is. Oh. Would he make the same switch to be skill too? Did he do it? Did he do it? That he did in that last set where he was down 2-0 and then he almost came all the way back and won. Yeah, we're trying to crane forward and see if he in fact did. Show me the pixels. Show me the pixels here in Losers Finals of EVO 2022. He did not. Still with the V-Skill 1, but Idom has just been looking absolutely unstoppable. Oh, hey. Okay, okay. Very important right there because, again, <laughs> how many times have we seen the cr crush cap? Okay, there we go. Gotcha, Kuhn. Correct on that mix-up. And here we go. He tried to interrupt. Not going to happen. So Idom in the danger of stun. Here comes Gacha Kun. We've seen how well he can make the adjustments. Last time he did it with a V skill change. Can he just do it? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. We all sense it. Every single person in this venue senses it. So the audience is screaming right now. I love the V break idea. There we go. Gacha Kun shutting it down this time. Gacha Kun said, enough. The collective <gasps> of every single person <laughs> in this audience when that throw happened. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Yep. You're going to have to block that. And I love the chase down. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay, yes. Yeah, he's finding more success at this range. Yeah, but again, you know, all this damage that you're doing right here, but then Idom with one sequence. How often has he made the comeback? Based off of one quick sequence. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Into the corner. It's going to hit. Idom's here. He needs more. He doesn't need any more. He only needs one more round to have gone over Mr. Crimson, over Daigo, over Tokido, and over Gachikun. I'm, Do I'm Dr. Strange right now. The finger, the one finger is up. One sequence. One oh sequence is all he needs. I looked through 14 million possibilities, James. <laughs> oh my goodness. And here we go. Gachikun now trying to stave off this defeat and a good start to this round. But this is all just to get one win on the board right now. Here we go. He's in there. Oh, yes, he fought. There yes, we go. Yes, okay, yes, okay. Yes, yes. And he should be able to build up enough meter for the critical okay. art here. There we go. With a perfect gotcha coon on the board, saving this off. He got it down to the final game against Kawano after going down 0 2. Could definitely do it again. That is the caliber of player oh, yeah. that Gotcha Kun is. It's just that Idom has been playing out of his mind. And that is a big win for Gotcha Kun to be able to stop the freight train right there <laughs> coming at you. It was Crackerjack right. punching the train, man. 
Turbo Gotcha. Next set, I don't. Continuing the fight. Ooh. Trying to settle things oh, down, no, but unfortunately, yeah, he was just trying to confirm it. He thought it was going to hit. I mean, it definitely looked like it was in time. But he did go for the heavy punch, which is a little slower. Oh, not a crush counter, though. Very important. There we go. Thanks for gotcha, Koon. Towards me. Oh, the back dash in the corner. It's a specific read. And here's Idom. One hit away. Oh, okay, okay, got okay, 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 okay. Finding his hit. And he needs more. Will he allow her to move? Not quite. Idom blocking again. He's got the resources to start this party. Oh, using the V trigger activation to give himself plenty of time to react. And it doesn't matter if you change your jump arc anymore. He's got that heavy. She's got that heavy anti-air. Oh, boy. Here mm. we go again. Here we go again. Trying to make it happen. Gachikun's defense coming into play there. Jumps over anti-air light, and Gachikun actually kind of has the point. No, not for long. Oh, here we go. <laughs> not for long. Oh, good trade. Good trade. Item's trying to turn on the juice. Oh, okay. there we go. There we go. Here comes Gachikun now towards the corner. Doesn't do the whole spinning mixer to get some more advantage on plus frames. Hey, look, man, I'm thinking back to the Daigo set that Idom had, where when he was on offense, yes, everything was going great. But when Daigo had his offense, that is when Daigo almost took the set. The more that Gachikun can find that up close offense, of course, easier said than done. The more success he can have. He woke up with standing medium uh -oh, punch. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He it's woke up One more sequence. Oh, boy. Okay, stud. You're not gonna quite have. He to might get no, super on actually, this. He, he might get super. He doesn't even need it. I don't even know if he needs it. He might get super. No. Oh, he didn't even need the super. He needed but one ex to do the whole trick to do half of that entire life bar. And there you go. Idom has taken out an incredible list of players. Mr. Crimson, many people's choice to win Evo. Daigo Umehara, many people's choice to win Evo. Tokido, many people's choice to win Evo. <laughs> and then Gachikun, many people's choice to win Evo. Idom, many people's choice to win Evo, has in fact made it into Grand oh. Finals. And here we go, this is that sequence right here, and watch this, what a perfect spacing right there. Safe, meaty, and look at the damage. Oh, Ghost, but dude, I mean, look, every time I see Laura and Idom on stream, I'm gonna have to do it. Pulling out the Javits Laura combos right there. <laughs> Shout outs to Javits. <laughs> what a finish there with the jump combo, mid combo to take it. Idom is in grand finals. Now, the road is hard here. Yeah. This is. Loser's bracket, he needs to defeat Kawano. Two sets of three out of five to take this tournament. Kawano only needs to win one time. One time. As we look at this bracket here, as you can see in the grand finals again, even though there's only that one spot in that upper right corner over there, Kawano has to only win one set. Idom has to come back. But look at this, three, three, what is it? Three, one, three, two. 3-0, 3-1. It is, oh. I just, I, I'm literally at a loss for words right now with this run from Idom. And uh, if you guys are, dude, look, look, dude I, I don't even know what to say. I don't know, I don't know what the transition is at this point either, James. <laughs> look, <laughs> just get in there. <laughs> I just gotta tell you right now, man. If you guys are enjoying this, if you guys are having a lot of fun with this, you too can also join as well on the mobile platform with Street Fighter Duel as well. As you can see here, beautiful artwork. I mean, honestly, some of the best artwork that I've seen for a mobile game like this. So check this out. This will be available in globally eventually, very soon, very soon right now, available to download in China. And then, of course, Street Fighter League US where Idom is from, Japan, where Kawano is from, and Europe finally getting their own Street Fighter League. So excited for that. I, I can't believe that Idom has just completely taken the words out of my mouth, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the desperation to try to deal with Idom is affecting even us up here on the commentary <laughs> desk. We have but one set, one match left. 
for EVO 2022 Street Fighter V Top 8. And we're going to get to it right after this. We're on getting his mom on. Now it's up to Duck to find those holes without that reversal to get out of the corner. So I like that Horus is taking full blown advantage of that, man. And he's looking good. Yep, and Horus gets that jump in right away too uh, from from Dark pressing these big buttons from G. Normally, when you're when you're anytime you're playing fighting against these characters with like these amazing normals, think of it as this is a close range fireball. You know what I mean? So if you jump against a big range normal, you're technically gonna punish him for throwing these 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 big normals from these characters. And just like that, that one jump in led into all this offense right here. Caught Dark slipping with attacks and Horus match points. That was OD. Like, wh what a switch up on speed, right? This is looking like the first set Horus. Yeah. See, Horus is now Horus in a situation where he's able to take more risk, right? This is outside of the physical point of the game, right? It's not just G versus Ed. It's Horus going, having up two games, match point mm -hmm. versus Dark with zero, nothing on the board. So he's going to take more risk. Mm hmm. 100%. I concur. That was nice. Nice breakdown. Mm. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Dark is playing fantastic, though. I like that. The close psycho snatcher, man. I swear it looks like the fireball sometimes. You really got to be a pair. You got to pay attention. Nice. Mm. The crush me in. It's really good. Ooh. Back nice heavy punish. kick. With punish. On the fierce? Oh, oh my Ooh. God. Love that. Ah. Are we going to activate the V trigger? Yes, we are. 100% it's going to be a situation he's going to wake up super. I'm calling it now, Justin. Wait, I'm calling I mean, it now. You might as well. Oh, I'm missing too far. Right here. Sometimes people Here's. do those with grass from that close just for the counter hit. Yep. Mm. Yep, that guard break stance. You never want to be in that position. Guard break stance is so good. All right, spends the meter right here. Now he doesn't have any beat trigger, but he does have super. Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Oh, he choked. He had the little forward. He had it. He did. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, oh, super did he press punch? Did he press no, he did not. no, he did not. No, he did not. No, he did not. Oh, the EX. The EX goes through. Whoa, that looks so crazy. It's just so many colors. Purple, red. But other than that, Horus is your champion. From the Michelob Ultra Arena, that's where we are holding EVO 2022 Finals Day. And that's where we only have one match left for Street Fighter V. Nice, not, nice not, that they named the arena after you, by I the way. I do dude. appreciate it, by the way. <laughs> and that's not only maybe the case for EVO 2022 for Street Fighter V, but that may in fact be the case for EVO and Street Fighter V. We don't know if it's true, but we, I think we all suspect with SF6, of course, on the way, that this might be the last run for Street Fighter V. Yeah, absolutely. And so this grand finals between these two players, Kawano from winner's side and Idom from loser's side, one of those is probably the final EVO Street Fighter V champion. But you know what? You know what Gacha Kun said, right? Whichever player wins will be a Capcom Cup champion. <laughs> and an EVO champion mm. <laughs> for Street Fighter V. Gacha Kun said there hasn't been one. And no man, oh wait, no, Gacha, sorry, Gacha Kun's already gone, I'm sorry. He's out of here. I'm sorry. He's but, gone. Wait, did that match happen already? <laughs> right, yes, it did, did, in fact. And although it was a three to one, it wasn't even a three to zero, it feels like it was 
Very quick. And Dude, very, I know him has destroyed my strong. brain. Yeah, yeah. I know him has destroyed my brain. He's mixing us up up here me, as well. Me talk and uh, <laughs> try process info. Kawano, I've loved his run. Let's talk a little bit about his run. Of course, only in winner's side. Before top eight, he took out Gentleman Thief, Yanub, Dankadias, Smug, and Kudo. That's a bunch of different characters. And it's a bunch of players who are really, really strong in their own. And then in this top eight, he's sent to losers Tokido and Gachikun. You know, it's hard to get better than that. It's hard. I don't think it's impossible. <laughs> because in the other side, Idom, who was sent to losers pretty early, actually, by uh, uh, after um, by Ryan Hart. That's right. After beating Book and Squall, has taken out Joey, Terrence, also Dekadias, JB, Sien, Angry Bird. That's all before top eight. In top eight, Mr. Crimson, Daigo Umehara, Tokido, and Gachikun. That is a list right there. What a list. And you got to imagine, as well as Kawano's been playing, I mean, Kawano has been looking unstoppable at this point in time. Yeah. But you just saw Idom go through so many players in a row. You've got to be a little bit nervous coming into this match, I would imagine. I think that may be true, but, you know, I'm not that guy in the chair. I think that he's somebody who feels pretty calm and cool in general. And I think he looks that way right now as we're trying to get something sorted out up there. He is, I mean, you know, he did have a close set versus Gachikun. He was up two games to zero. He almost took that thing 3-0, right? It was mm -hmm. almost very fast, yeah, almost yeah, just yeah, yeah. a run through. And then Gachikun made that change. Here's why I'm a little concerned for Kawano. Gachikun made that change. And the change that he made was to not only play traditional grounded footsies. It was to play heavy mix-ups and yes. big movement. And you know <laughs> who he's up against right now? You see this guy and the heavy mix-ups that he brings to bear? We'll see, everybody. Here we go! We're going to be getting into Grand Finals! On the winner's side, we have Kawano from Japan. And on the loser's side, we have Idom from the United States of America. Let's get into it! It's Evolution 2022! We're back after a long hiatus, and here it comes right now. Kawano with a great start. And look at this, winning the neutral pretty soundly. But again, winning the neutral against Idom clearly is not the solution to beating Idom. Because once Idom gets stuck, you have to kill him before he gets that V trigger activated. This spacing traps. He stole the biggest turn in the world in that spacing <laughs> trap. Man did a thunderclap. Here we go. EX tries to jump away. Idom is usually really good at chasing after people who jump away with that with an anti-air elbow. Did not get it this time. So here comes Kawano. Back yes, don't give him a chance. Take him out before he has a chance to get the activation. And that is what you need to do right there, Kawano. Do not let up. He played great. I, oh, yes, he's playing the mix-up well. He's got the corner all of a sudden. And as he has throughout this top eight, he has made this right corner his home. Yeah, and he is looking so dominant right now. Is this the end right here for uh, Idom? Is this going to be what stops the train? Look at this from Kawano. He is absolutely dominating this game number one. And he only needs to win three games. It's grab, yes. It's, it's grab, it's just a yes or no strike or throw. And he was right to get a perfect. To get a perfect against Idom and all the success that Idom has just had. So awesome start for Kawano. He got into the corner and he never really had to deal with the mix-ups from Idom because he got there first. Absolutely. Like I said, just don't give him that chance. Like I said, Idom needs one sequence. And speaking of, here comes Idom starting up. And there's that thunderclap. After the throw tech, Idom will throw a thunderclap. And that is a common decision that he makes. And because a lot of players aren't ready to go throw out a big button after the throw tech. Nice use of EX Vanity Step right there to get the projectile in bowl. And here comes Kawano. And finally, Idom with the oh, oh. Oh, there's the crush right there. That didn't combo into the fireball, unfortunately. But here comes Idom. That fireball's still coming. He went low oh. 17 times in a row because he figured Kawano would be expecting the overhead. Big hit. The defense from this man, Kawano, unparalleled so far. What? Oh, wow. What a chase down. Even Kawano was so high up in the air with Colleen. 
even if he had landed in time, which he might have, he probably was not expecting an overhead at that moment. Let's confirm on Ford Fierce. Okay, so giving a bunch of different looks about what to do after <laughs> the Light Parabellum. Oh, oh, he just walked into that. He tried to challenge. Well, the wake up buttons this time from Kawano. Parabellum Nicely on done. fire. He's in. Oh, good throw tech right there from Idom. Oh, and a whip punish. Here comes the, what's the meaty situation? Dash up. Yep, light punch. Get, you're in the blender here. <laughs> oh, no. But Kawano, oh, offensive V-shift yeah, break. To keep the offensive side of things going. God, oh, he got the cross up. That was so, he tried. He hit the light kick, actually. Yeah. He hit the stand, standing light kick from her. Here oh, comes Kawano. Aha. aha. He can set up hail, he does. Throw. What's the mix up here? Goes into the activation, so scary. He has gone for so many throws. Another throw. And in fact, another throw? Yes. What? That is punishable <laughs> on block? Yes, it is. Yes, it absolutely is. But you know when it's not punishable? Is if it hits in the very specific <laughs> situation of somebody backdashing at half screen. Oh, good. Okay, uh -huh. nice, just, nice. Just keep that in mind for next time you're using Laura, that if you think the opponent's going to be backdashing half screen away from you, there you go. That's your solution. <laughs> <laughs> the level of reads. Now, okay, one to one. Back to this neutral. Oh, no. An execution error from uh, Idom, but you know what? Wasn't a big punish from Kuano. And again, like I said, all this life that Idom loses in this beginning part, all it is is I'm building up V Trigger. Mm, delayed, crouching strong. And here's Kuano again finding the corner. Tries to go finally for the shimmy. Crush, but guess what? Idom has the trigger. <laughs> Here we go. Got the knockdown and he chases. He's looking for the V-ship. There have been so few V-ships actually. Yes, there's one. Oh my God, how did he block that in time? The command throw, that's a stun. Can he kill in the situation? No, she's got the V-trigger. I, I think she's smoked, dude. Yep. Oh. Okay. So, I mean, it continues to be the case that when Idom finds pressure, he's terrifying. Kawano has better defense than almost everybody, and even he's falling susceptible to that. However, what's great for Kawano, the positive sign for him is that his own offense has been great, yes. Okay, this is gonna be a stun, most likely. No, not quite. Actually, this is great for Kawano. That's gonna be less scaling. Wow, he just went for the overhead. Sure did, sure did. What? He whiffed crouching strong and did a fierce afterwards. Sometimes you're absolutely just always right. And here's chasing. Oh, no. oh yeah, because when you hit, the fireball goes away. What? Just went through the thunderclap in that situation. I think he just threw a counter as well. Here's Idom. He didn't quite get the dub. It's not here yet. Here's Kawano. Okay, here's an opportunity now. No! no! What was that? Kawano wasn't sure. Like, I feel like he had like three, two things that he wanted to do and he couldn't decide between them. And the wrong thing came out and literally gifted Idom that win. It's the first big error, I think, that we've seen for Kawano in this top eight. And it comes at the worst time for him. And that's what Idom does to you. Like I said, I mean, he's he's mixed me up. And I'm sitting up here. I'm not even sitting next to him. He's at reset game after a dominating first game from Kawano. Mm. But it was because Idom was just like, you know what? I'm just going to keep blocking. And Kawano finally showed that he was like throwing seven times in a row. But since then, Idom has been right every time again. Stealing turns here. OK. Yep, and Underneath. you know what? It's great. You got him to spend the V-bar on that V-shift. That's right. That's right. Right on. Now, oh boy. Kawano's trying to be outside of Laura's button ranges. He wants to get whiff punishes going. That's a big strength right. of his character. And I wanted you to keep in mind, oh, Idom has not gone for a lot of command throws at all. So be careful. Watch out. There's going to be a command throw at the end of a round, probably. He feels the there chase. There he is right there. Kawano was out of it, though, and Kawano's got the corner. Jab! It's Idom on reset point! Using Laura's one-frame jab. Instant jab. If you're, <laughs> if you're in the area, it's just a one-frame jab, apparently. Of course, really, it's three. It's just that he has been right so often. And here he goes. Here's that sequence again. And you see how he always decides to go for regular throw so much? So that if Kwano escapes it, he can't punish the command throw, right? Absolutely. 
Again, Again. challenge! And maybe where Kawano's looking for V-Rev, but boy, Idom has pressed jab there twice now. Okay, activation for Kawano now. Important place, but it... Oh, back Beautiful dash. defense. Oh, Kawano with the read. Uh-oh, back throw. Guess what? Activation? Not quite yet. Got oh, there it, it is. Activation. What are you going to do? You got to defend now. Got to defend. There's the thunderclap. Yep, you catch. No, oh, the anti-air is ready to go. Not quite there on the punish. Kawano. Challenge is nice. Nice challenge right there. But here comes the buttons. Dead man item. Reset! We have a bracket reset. We are tied at zero, zero. Can Idom complete this journey? All the way through the loser's bracket, he just defeated Gachakun. Previous to that, Tokido. Previous to that, Daigo. Previous to that, Mr. Crimson. And so now he effectively sends Kawano to loser's bracket. They're both now in loser's side. That's the way to think of this. And as a result, Whoever wins this next set is EVO champion. Look at that look from Kuano right now. He is staring up to the sky right now because he is thinking the same thing that everybody watching this event right now is thinking is, how do you stop this juggernaut? That's the question. He's back with his character with Colleen. I don't think many people would have thought before going into this EVO that our grand finals would be Colleen versus Laura. You know, there's been a lot of chatter about the tears. This is a pretty good game when it comes to that balance, folks. And here we have two players who believe in their characters. And they have a second set to play. Oh, here's a great start for Idom. Gets those meaty plus frames. Nice check right there from Kuano. But Kuano has not been able to find the sequence with the repeated regular throws. Here comes the pressure from Idom. Oh, close to stun. One more mix up in the stun. Plus frames, yep, here's more pressure. Oh. He does get punished. Wow, Kawano's there in time. He's got the corner. And remember, his own offense has been good. The back dash this time from Idom, not enough to kill. Okay, hey. beautiful, beautiful right there. Kawano calling out potentially the command throw, but the V reversal from Idom, so smart. Okay, anti air. Idom trying to find one of those miracle jump ins that he's gotten so many times. Yeah, his jump light kick is off and around Cielo for him. You know what else can be is just regular old command grab. I'm thinking back to the mix-up in the corner on the left side, when after the jump in, there had been jabs. There was finally an attempted grab by Kawano. And you know what came out but backdash from Idom. Idom officially has the lead here in Grand Finals. Nice backdash from Kawano. But like I said, all the damage to Laura just seems to be a prelude to Idom activating that V-trigger and just the terror that happens afterwards. And that's the hardest part if you're fighting Idom. All this isn't good enough right now. That is how it feels. That's a difficult perception to battle against if you're the player. Because the reality is that he has a life lead right now. And he has fantastic spacing. And he generally has fantastic whiff punishing and he didn't get it there. Oh, here we go. How does he? He gets that crush so many times. Here we go. Activation. This is the terror. Okay. Oh my god. What is happening here? Oh, he tried to hit a button. No, that fireball's still going. Item is up. One game to zero over Kawano. I think Kawano thought that that fireball would be gone by the time I, he woke up. I agree. Absolutely. He tried to do a button, and what can you do in that situation? It's not like she even has an invincible DP or anything like that. Maybe tried to go for a counter or something. Here we go. Item starting here. One game up in the reset of the bracket here at Evolution 2022-2022. Again, setting up Thunderclap. Chasing oh it gosh. down, the shield of Thunderclap. And offensive V-Rev, because why not take advantage of it when you can? Instead, Kawano's out, he guesses right, and he's got corner pressure. Yep. Activation comes. Here we go, pressure now, okay. That's, fu oh, here we go. How is he gonna follow this up here? It's enough to stun. There's gonna be a lot of scaling, but he should be able to kill off of this. Yes! Last hit, Kawano getting that round. Trying to tie things up 1-1 here in the reset bracket. Hey. 
and backs off. Having seen actually Chikwano jump out of a few recent command grabs, here comes Kawano just absolute genius after having seen Kawano <laughs> jump away. That was the most angry compliment I've ever <laughs> Oh, here we go. And now Kawano here getting a lot of momentum. If Kawano can stay this off and start getting and get himself on the board. Just needs one hit for the stun and it'll be over. Oh, the armor. Baby. Oh! oh! And it is stun. And Kawano is going to win his first game since the very first game of the first set. So in other words, it's been four games straight by Idom after yep. Kawano won that first game. This is very important. Has he turned it around? Has he gotten to this point now where he has convinced Idom that he, to, to slow Idom down, basically? Hey, okay. That's a great trade. Sure. Great trade for uh, Kawano. Right, 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 right. However, Idom's in. The buzzsaw spinning. And the command grab thread is always there, but there's a lot of times Idom has had that standing light kick hit on a cross up like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's something he often goes to, standing light kick. He's, his defense after that jump roundhouse. Okay, but anyway, Kawano's in the corner. Can the Still able to control. He activates just in case. Oh, oh that's oh. going to be a punish. And here we go. He has activation. Command throw to start here. Is this it right here? Is this the one sequence once again? The overhead. He's going to link off of that. Oh, 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 boy. taking that round here after Kawano with an impressive 2-0 victory to tie it up 1-1. Idom trying to fight back, trying to give himself that one game lead again. Though just there's the left-right mix-up. Okay, B-Shift, smart. Doesn't matter, but the old... Needs one more for stun. Instead, Kawano reads the dash and yes. gets the counter. Idom's D there has been great. He's been really mixing up between back tech and... No oh tech. no, he didn't combo off the crush counter! He oh, missed oh, oh. it, and he accidentally cornered himself. Oh, oh, oh! Can he get there? No, not quite. Kawano safe. And on reaction! Nice. We've seen Kawano with that amazing air throw a couple of times. Too far away for Idom to connect off of that thunderclap. How is that thunderclap in neutral so scary? And look at that, he even confirmed that. Yeah, the block confirmed from Idom, yes. Okay. Kawano has super. He's cage man on the left. <gasps> Whoa, he did the thing! It was Ida who, who stole a huge turn. Crouching medium kick advance in the command throw. We have not seen. No. Honestly, Ida does Haven't not go for command throw a lot. He really saves it a lot of the time. He is at tournament Round game. Four. He needs one more game to become the Evolution 2022 champion. Can he do this or can Kawano clutch this out? We, you asked earlier, is this Kawano's time? Can he do this? And I said definitively yes. But that was until he so far has run into Idom, who has been almost unstoppable here in the loser side of the bracket. Looking for the confirm there's Idom as he's really controlling this game. Finally, again, typically a huge strength of Kawano is his footsies and his whiff punishing. And it just hasn't really been there. Idom usually hasn't even been in that spot. And the ranges of the thunderclaps are braver than anybody else's. Jab first. Kawano's gonna get a knockdown. He's gonna get Oki. His own pressure's been good. He's gotta build on this. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the problem is you need to finish your plate. You have to finish the plate. Otherwise, here comes Idom. There's that thunderclap, which has been just causing so many problems to so many people. Wow, he actually read that was medium. Stand medium rather than crouching. Okay, oh, activation. In. Idom wants to keep. What? You no. got jammed and you still hit a button. You got jammed and you still hit a button. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Trigger attacks right there. The projectile invulnerability steals that round or saves the round, really. Yeah. And Kawano with the B shift. Again, not something we've seen too often. Oh, again. Oh! Everything worked out for Idom, who now will be sitting at Evo Tournament. It's just one round for Idom. Kawano, can he 
play the most clutch round of his life? Or is it going to be Idol to be the EVO champion? He's stuck. He's in the corner. Here's Koana making the big read, and he punishes well. Yes, here we go. Good high damage punish, and he's spending everything he's got for the damage right there. He finally gets that mixed up right. Okay, close to stun. Throw mix up here. No, nope, goes for the buttons. He got the stun, but he's not going to be able to kill. He has no resources here. And again, Idom just needs one sequence. Koano running it. Oh! Koano! Koano ties it up. Not done just yet. We are going to the final game here for Street Fighter V at Evolution 2022. Not just that, but again, maybe the final game of Street Fighter V at Evolution! Here comes a start from Idom. Oh, trade, what a trade combo! He was able to combo off of that, and there we go, a bunch of lows catching Idom, trying to walk backwards. Look at this movement from Kuano, beautiful! But there's the anti-air, tries to chase down the V-ship, gets the counter hit combo to the corner here. Trap, regular throw. Stealing the turn in on the dash. Back dashing, expecting the escape. Anything's gonna do it for Idom to again go to tournament point. Uh, he's at tournament point. Kawano again, two rounds away from his own champion. Chip, Idom only needs the one round left and got the anti air. Stuck. Out of the air. Stuck still. Overhead. Overhead, Overhead again. I Command throw. Oh my god! One stun away from tap, maybe one hit. Nice Challenge check! So nice important. check! Kawano, not only is he free from stun, but he's got the corner and he's got a chance to pressure. Where's he headed? Backdash from Idom. Okay, anti air. Yes, Kawano has been so on point with the anti air. Gonna get the stun off of this. Cannot kill, but he's gonna be able to keep a guarantee for pressure. Combo into the setup here. Gets a hit. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, I punched the wrong way! It punched the wrong way! Oh, and here we go! Everybody, it is the final, 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 final round for Evolution 2022 of Street Fighter V! Who's gonna take it? Is it Item or Kawano? Item with the anti air, he gets to set things up. He tries it a little bit. There's Kawano with the interruption. And his own pressure will come. Here we go, there's the pressure. Goes for the oh, okay. Challenging. Yes. Antire again. Idom and the escape comes. It's V shift. All right, no quick rise. Back dash to build the distance. Yeah. Idom here. Okay. Trying to say it gets Confirm. the hit. Confirm. Hoping to see a chase. Nothing came. And again, that range right there. He dashes it overhead. I've never seen so many hit in a single game. Here he comes. He's trying to get again, it. Again, the V shift. Again, the V shift to escape the command throw. Idom's trying to finish it off with his command throw. It might be his downfall. Here we go. Activation. The party starts. She's here to party, James. Okay, again, the V-shift. Oh, oh, my God. And party she does in here. It was too early. Saved by it. Oh, but the cross counter, but he didn't combo off of it. He missed the confirm. She still has some V-trigger left. The life almost even here with 38 left on the clock. Scheming towards the corner. Thunderclap yet again. What? No, too far away for the anti-air. The crush counter from Kuano. He gets the hit. Activation. Is this going to be enough to kill? Is this going to kill? It is. And Kawano takes it over Idom in the most clutch victory you could possibly imagine. Just shy of the victory, Kawano is the Evolution 2022 champion. You can see Idom is beside himself, but Kawano has done it. Kawano at one point lost four games in a row in that set. Four games in a row in which Idom had almost total control. And uh, then he managed to battle all the way back in this set to take it. What fortitude by this young man. Talk about the next generation of high-level Japanese Street Fighter. Here it is, folks. It's already here. Kawano has made it happen, and he takes Evo. How much have we missed this kind of action, this kind of play from some of, oh, and you he can see. He has not yet gotten up, James. He is He's so, still in the chair. What a run by Idom, and if you're Idom, 
you feel like that kind of run in loser's bracket means you can't possibly lose. Like it is manifest destiny to take the tournament just shy by a tiny bit of life. Kawano stopping the freight train. That is Idom. And he is the Evolution 2022 champion. He lost to Ryan Hart, did Idom. And after that, again, Joey, Danke Diaz, Terrence, JB, Sien, Angry Bird, and then in top eight, Mr. Crimson, Daigo, Tokido, Gachikun. <laughs> and then first set on Kawano, so it kind of Kawano also, but not the second set when it counted the absolute most. Kawano, again, the ability that he had to figure out what went wrong and to make the adaptation and to actually make it happen against as strong as Iodom seen this buzzsaw cutting down these giant trees of Japanese Street Fighter, of worldwide Street Fighter. Fantastic play by Kawano in the end. He absolutely deserves it. Absolutely, and again, just the level of play that we see here, this is the only kind of place you can see something like this is Evolution and Evo. In I just, it's been so long since we've been able to see something like this. Kawano cementing himself as a EVO champion for for the forever. Forever, he absolutely. He is the champion forever. And again, probably the final one for Street Fighter V. Uh, exactly, and you know, obviously, uh, I just have, I just want to say one thing really quick. Honestly, I'm so proud of everybody to have made it through the last two and a half years. We've had to learn so much about our community and, uh, you know, we've learned all sorts of cool things. We've, we've learned how to run these online tournaments and stuff. We've grown so much stronger as a community. And I just want to say everybody who's watching this and who has stayed, you know, um, vigilant in this fighting game community, thank you guys. Thank you guys. If it wasn't for you guys, there's so many chances that the FGC could have crumbled during this pandemic. But we came through it, and this was our reward right here, a, a tournament finals like this. And I cannot ask for a better way to welcome back Street Fighter at EVO. In a hard way in many ways, in, in untold ways over the last few years. And it, I agree with you. It does feel sweet to be here in person, even if you're not here in person, if you're watching from home. The kind of feeling that you get from an in-person event when the stakes are this high, when you can feel the feeling in the room, or again, even if you're at home, you can feel the feeling through Twitch. <laughs> I know, I've been there many times myself. Uh, that kind of feeling is just really sweet, and I absolutely missed it. So excited to have been back here and to have been able to call all this action for you in truly some of the best Street Fighter V matches that I've seen. Yeah. Some of those back and forths there, some of those three twos are for the ages. Fantastic top eight, congratulations to all the players. Absolutely, and again, honestly, it was a joy. It was a joy calling this. Uh, it's, it, our job is easy when yeah. the matches are this good. That's definitely sure. Dude, blast to call Street Fighter with you again. As always, we were able to do the opening set of Street Fighter V at EVO 2. We used to be able to do that every year at EVO. I was super excited to be able to do that and to also close the show out with you. Yeah, and you know what? Let's Woo! not delay it any further. Let's get the players their awards. Oh, good stuff. Let's get the players their awards. Let's throw it to L.I. Joe for the award ceremony. All right, guys, all right, all right, hold on. Before we actually get into the award ceremony, just a few quick things about Street Fighter V in general. You know, we lost a few years. These players lost a few years of being able to compete on this very stage in this game. So please, this could potentially be Maybe the last top eight Street Fighter V we may see in EVO. So I would need you guys to do me a huge round, excuse me, a huge favor. Everybody get up. Let's give these gentlemen a round of applause for the game that they play and the heart. And the heart that goes into playing it. Thank you very much. Now let's get into this amazing top eight.
Are you ready? In seventh place, can we please give it up for just a kid? And also in seven play, let's make some noise for Mr. Crimson. <laughs> give it up, give it up, give it up, yep. Now on to fifth, we got Oil King, yeah! And also in fifth place, Daigo the Beast Umehara-san. And now to my left, <laughs> in fourth place, the murder face, Tokido. <laughs> give it up, give it up, you wanna give it up, go ahead. All right, now our top three EVO 2022 Street Fighter V finalists. In third place, Gachi Kun. in second place. I said, I said in second place. And now, we're gonna give it up for the EVO 2022 Street Fighter V Grand Champion. Let's go, give it up! Yeah! Yes, 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 yes! Go on! Hold it up. Yes. Yes.
All right, everybody in the crowd, please. I need this one to be extremely loud. Make them hear us in the casino outside. Your 2022 Street Fighter V Top 8. Yo, Oil King just shook my hand. I was crazy. Hey, guys. Hey guys! Um, there might be some people that want to come out and talk to you. Do you guys have a little bit to hang out and talk a little bit? For... That was a joke, right? That was a joke. You guys are kidding me. There's people in the back that want to talk to you. Can you guys hang out? Can we get them out here? Can we get them out here? Thank you. So let me bring them out. Please, can I get the two of the four commentary voices for Street Fighter VI to come to the stage? Vicious and Otto. Before we get anywhere near something great, I have to say, seeing you all here after so long means the world to all of us fighting game fans. I need another round of applause for you guys right here, live in the Mandalay Bay for Evolution 2022. I have a very, very special guest here with me, Arusan. He has a couple of words for you all as well before we even get started. Arusan, would you please? Thank you. Uh, thank you for all of prayers. Awesome action. Uh, we just saw. Uh, I was glad to see many of you fans were wearing masks at this evil. I can tell that we wanted to keep the community safe. Excitement and thrill were a winner was best. Thank you. From Arusan and myself, what matters right now is the community. And again, we appreciate each and every one of you. I know you guys have heard a lot of news coming in from the Street Fighter team. Well, let me tell you this. We might have even more for the evolution of Street Fighter, but I really want to show you what's to come if I could just hear it for you. Are you guys ready for the future of Street Fighter? Let me hear it. Without further ado, Aru, let's kick it off. Okay. Hey, everybody! Do you want information? Yes, I know. I want to eat. Do you, do you want to move? Let's see 
ザニュートロイラーフォースイーツワイダーセックスインターナショOne more time, Street Fighter VI, Jury, just a kid. <laughs> All right, real quick, real quick, real quick. I need you guys to hang out. We got more coming up. We're just going to hit this great break, but we will be right back. Please hang out with us. Hang out with us, just a kid. Hang out.
Achilles, son of Hercules. Hercules is too soft. If you cannot make the sacrifice, I will make it for you. This is there is no escaping your fate. the game that's how some nagos like to play and some don't think it's wise right some will just rather you know take the slow and steady game but if you get that game started early like his name says it's the one shot yeah and i think you know we were talking about how the last game was looking kind of dire for hotashi the composure to keep it together was mm -hmm. very impressive wake up backdash on the second uh blood sucking universe sonic just ready for it meter this OTG super wall break, that is so useful. Mm-hmm. Got the positive bonus and goes straight for the Berserker Slash Sonic. Taking this first round, game number four. Okay, I like the slowdown at round star. Hotashi's been Beyblading a lot and Sonic's been stuffing it, so I, I like that we see the adaptation from Hotashi. Great backdash, 5k to answer whatever Sonic was doing on recovery. Fukio to get in, 2K, 2D with punish, and now Sonic's on. Oh, wow, what a switch, 5K to answer. Here comes Hotashi, look at this combo to the other side. Pop though, so close up. A drop, a drop of blood is all it's gonna take the back throw again. Hotashi, let that gauge go down. The PRC kinda had the block though, didn't have a lot of great options, maybe only back dash or something. Hit. Dash through, gets him with the H once again. This is not looking good. Meter on the table. I'm not sure if this is going to kill. All no, right. not quite. Okay, still a chance right now. Sonic Fox can try to set two to six. H, probably try to jump four possibly. considering how many tournaments, how much experience these people have so far, right? So it's, this is a great back and forth. Once again, gets caught by the Beyblade. You need to be careful. My man wakes up and was like, yo, Leo was like, I don't care. Nago, no. my man, you don't, you can't stop me. <laughs> that's what you have to do sometimes, right? Like, the thing is, Sonic Fox is known for being wily on defense, but if you never flash kick, right? Like, what are you gonna mm -hmm. do? Look at the anti-air 5Ps from Hotashi's BSU whiff. Just built that second wow. gauge of blood. Counter